And we are back with another Black Window Cream podcast. New episode every single Wednesday and Sunday. I'm your host, Ben Haggerty, a.k.a. Ben Real vs. World. That's how they know me on the internet, so I just say that. In the, you know, Some people don't know my real name versus my Instagram name. And my Instagram name seems to be more real than my real name. I was at an event uh, for EA. I did the tutorial about it on our Black Window Cream YouTube channel or whatever, about how, how I did speed ramping and shit. But while I was there, I was... Uh, in the back like photography video space you know i mean where the like media could stay at and i was walking some dude was like looking at me kind of like smiling so i was like what's up and he's like what's your name and i was like ben i was like ben Haggerty, and he's like no what's your instagram name i was like oh uh ben reverse world he's like that's how i know you man like damn we post all your shit i work for billboard or complex or whoever it was at the time i don't know i was like oh shit that's crazy but it's funny as fuck because i'm like no one really knows my real name. That's a whole nother story. We don't got to talk about that. Uh, man, I, I don't have ADD, but I definitely don't stay on topic if I don't have anything in front of me. Right now, I don't. I didn't bring my computer because I want to do this by myself. But anyway, new episode today, motherfuckers. It is Kavika Bonis. I botched it in uh, the beginning of the intro of introducing him to in the actual interview. And he's been my friend for years, so I've been saying it wrong for a long time. Kavika, you would know him on online as Kavika. He is a VFX artist, director, editor, videographer, photographer. Like the dude really can do a lot of shit. It's freaky. But he his main his main, you know, source of income comes from his VFX work. He is a machine when it comes to VFX. I don't really get it, uh, but we've been working together for a long time. We started working together on Chris Brown's documentary years ago and uh i've seen him grow he's done so many amazing things his his story is really really valuable there's a lot of good information in it um he's from hawaii originally now he lives in la he uh his just the way he thinks and creates he shits on everybody anyone that you see on instagram that you look at video wise and you're like man they're doing some cool trendy shit kavika's doing it he just doesn't have followers that's really it like you just don't know about him because you're not following his shit but the way he creates content is just next level. And so I'm glad to finally get him on the podcast. He brought two of his trophies that he's won. Uh, happened to be MTV Music Video Award trophies. He won two Moon Men in one year, which is crazy. Uh, after going freelance, working for a company and then going freelance by himself. And he won two Moon Men back to back. Like, bop, bop. Got him. How, makes me want trophies like that now. So I got to get my shit together. But uh, yeah, he brought those. He shared his story. It's amazing. I think you guys are really going to like it. So enjoy this episode with Kavika um, and make sure to follow him on all of his social media accounts. We're going to be doing a lot of tutorials and things like that on Black Window Cream featuring Kavika, which will be fucking awesome and do some really in-depth teaching. I'm excited for that and to start that journey. Yeah, that's it. Uh, new merch. It's not even new. It's, we've had it in the store for a while. It might be new if you look it up today for you. Uh, shop BWNC.com. Definitely, please go pick up a piece of merch. That's it. That helps us every single day. Shirts, hoodies, long sleeves, short sleeves, coffee mugs, hats, whatever you could think of. We got it. Um, we're going to work on getting some new stuff coming out soon. Patreon.com slash Black Window Cream. If you want to fuck with us on that level, there's a lot of perks for that. If you uh, you know subscribe to our Patreon page, and um, you can do that Patreon at Patreon.com slash Black Window Cream. That's it. Reviews. That's all I ask for. If you can drop a little comment on YouTube and let us know how we're doing, we always appreciate that, you know? I think this is episode 77. We're nearing 100, which is crazy. Uh, this is a lot of work, so it's fucking nuts to think about, but I don't know what if it is episode 77. I'm pretty sure it is, but uh, anyway, it doesn't matter. It's Kavika's episode. That's all that matters. So stay tuned. Enjoy this shit. Um, that's it. Keep creating. Enjoy the work week. Uh, I'm going to start the most epic podcast intro you've ever heard in your entire life right motherfucking now. Attention. If you stop this podcast recording at any time, you will die. I don't want to die. Do you want to live? Yeah. You have 24 hours to share this podcast with five people or you will die. I'm kidding. You won't die. You're just weak shit for not sharing. And the winner of the best motherfucking podcast goes to... <gasps> Those two.
black with no cream. What do you think? It's so fucking dumb and so fucking Ben Haggerty. I knew you would say that. And we are back with another Black with No Cream podcast today with Michael Kavika Bennis. <laughs> it's Bonus, but yeah, fuck, I've said it wrong for five years. <laughs> nah, everybody gets my name wrong, the entire name. Is so. it really Bonus? Yes. B A N I S. That's yeah, Filipino. Swag. Shout out to the Philippines. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> it's dope over there. <laughs> I've never been to the Philippines, but you're from Hawaii, right? I am. How's that? It's dope. Um, I try to go home maybe at least once a year. The, so. Is that the most expensive? Eh, not as bad as it was before, but you know. What do you mean as right. before? Like what? Like months ago? Uh, or, there's I mean, a lot couple more, years back. Yeah, there's a lot more like airlines going there. You know recently like southwest so oh it's a lot cheaper now um what the fuck are these things that you just put on my table oh these are uh moon dudes uh vmas that um we won i won it with nocturnal jr jr strickland he was on the podcast he was on a podcast check it out podcast number eight maybe i don't fucking know six or eight six look it up one of those um if you're listening to this on audio uh, the intro video is usually just me with my guests staring at the cameras and I was staring by myself and then Kavika came in and sat down two <laughs> gigantic MTV Moon Men awards that he won. Two different awards that you won in the same year, right? Right, that's correct. For yep. what what videos? What do we got here? Uh, it's uh, Big Sean, Light, yep. and um, Logic, uh, Black Spider-Man, I think it's called. The one with the cats? Yeah, the one with the cats. It was in the same category. So, um, they were, they were. So how do you win two? Well, in that category, actually both, um, videos, they were both nominated in that category, but all videos in that category actually ended up winning. What the hell? Yeah. It was just, it's a, uh, if you can see it's fight against the system. Best fight against the system. Big Sean. Yeah. Light. So it was like it, its own specific category and, and, you know, and it ended up all videos in that category won. Oh, cool. So it's kind of like a statement, like, oh, these all, all these videos oh, have yeah, an right. impact on the, you know. Right, so right. They, and, instead of just choosing one winner, all these dudes, you know. What was the big Sean? Can you break down both those videos for people who haven't seen them yet? Obviously um, watch them if you if you haven't seen them yet, but Big Sean's video is about what? Well, this big is the Sean, one with the light beam, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big Sean, uh, so yeah, it's uh, he's like driving around um, finding these people that are like going through hard times or whatever, and there's you know he's kind of somehow conjuring up this light and um it's kind of like a metaphor for like something better something you know and um we actually most of the vfx was that specifically was specifically that light and um adding just atmosphere and all that so i mean that was big sean and then the black spider-man actually did a lot i i wasn't like a lot in the process of the black spider-man one because of the fact jr kind of got me on later Mm. but um I actually ended up doing the the cats at the end of the video and uh, they're having a conversation at the end and I, you know, I made them talk. <laughs> <laughs> How the fuck so, did you do that? Did you guys shoot real cats? Are they uh, fake? Yeah, they were real. We were like trying to figure out the best way to do it. And, um, you know, there's always the best way to do it. There's always, you know, also the cheapest way to do it. Mm. But um, they actually shot real cats and they shot footage of the cats. We ended up having to composite them onto a, you know, a roof because they were shot on green. Right. But um, I ended up finding the best, you know, shots and then, um, you know, animating their mouths the way that they were talking. So how long did that take to do? Uh, I, don't, I don't remember. Usually when I, when I do those kind of things, it like I just it kind of just blurs. It kind of just goes. Um, you don't even know that no, yeah, three even, days, five days have passed. Uh, it, yeah, <laughs> pretty much. I mean, it wasn't more than like two, three days, but. Yeah, just find the best way to perfect it and what the client wants and all that. So, dude, I'm so fucking jealous that you have these. I want yeah. these. Yeah, it makes me want to do music video stuff again, cause yeah. I just want to have that shit on my thing and then I'll call it a day. No, uh, it was always kind of my my dream to get these guys. So, I mean, you know, <laughs> I want it specifically for VFX. Like that's another goal now because I have them now. So I kind of want to do better and be like you know lead vfx for something that gets that's wins in the vfx category right so um it's cool that now i have that goal instead of just winning a moon man yeah yeah, right so i think that's you know what's uh can you tell a fun fact about when you win a moon man how you receive it i don't think people understand how you get your award do you know what i'm talking about no no 
How you have to buy them? Oh, okay, yeah. Well, you have to buy them. I mean, I, I feel like that's with all. Awards. I didn't know that. I didn't know that either. For like the, when we won the telly. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, they were asking, oh, do you want to get a telly? I'm like, oh, hell yeah, I want to get a fucking telly. $250. <laughs> and I was like, $250? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they're, they're asking us what we want to put on it. I'm like, shouldn't you guys know? Did yeah. We? <laughs> it was yeah. Like, it, it, it was pretty much the same thing for those things. So. That's so weird. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't like, you know, so it kind of I mean, lost. it's better that it, it, at least your team has the option to get one if they worked on it. Because right. obviously, like, it could be like a 100-man crew. And right. you can't just give 100 free fucking right, statues right, right, away right, right. to people. But... Still, I, you all, I always, I never would have imagined that winners of the best videos on earth would right. have to pay for a fucking trophy. That doesn't. Right, right. I, I think it's the same with the, the Walk of Fame. I think everybody has to buy their own star, too. Damn. I think it's the same shit, so. Damn. You got people fucked up. That's crazy. I mean, by the time that you, you know, get a star, you don't, you're not the one paying for it. People, probably other people are paying for it, but you know what I mean? Yeah, just, millions of it's dollars. Not like, of it's not like just given to you that you've made over the years of being yeah. a superstar. That's crazy. Um, so Kavika and I go really far back to the beginning of my time in LA pretty much. Um, I'll tell people a majority of like your accomplishments in the beginning, but what are some of the highlights besides these two fucking things that you've done? Um, you do so much different shit too. It's not just like, he's not just a VFX artist. He's not just a editor. You do everything, which is nuts. Uh, and you shoot. Are you talking specifically... I don't know, like high-time achievements for you. Like, what were some of the cool moments? We worked on Chris Brown's documentary together. That was fun. Right. That was cool. Um, I mean, I, I feel like a lot of my accomplishments in LA, I kind of, like, have shown, like, on my social media. You should go follow me if you want to. Yep, follow me. But um, a big thing that I really liked was um, I actually founded my own company. And this is, like, before I moved to LA, before anything. But... Um, we actually were, we were making a lot of money <laughs> doing that. And I, I never thought I would own my own company. Right. Um, specifically doing what I like to do, which is, you know, video production. And it's still like, I'm still running it today. And it's, it's not specifically creative stuff, but it's still the fact that I'm working with video. I'm working, you know, I'm, it's just me and my partner. Right. That's, we're pretty much the only, you know, people in that company. We ha will hire like, um, I don't know, just people on the side, if anything, but it's just me and him. But the fact that how far we've come because of that, especially the fact that I didn't know I would be running a company, <laughs> you know, let alone owning half of it. Didn't know when, when like you were in college and shit? Yeah, like I, I right. didn't expect to do that. I didn't, it just kind of like happened over time. Yeah. And I, I think that's a big accomplishment just because it's just something I never expected. Right, right, right. Like, you know, to me, so. But you're like main client for that, because I didn't even know that until like later on and you were like, oh yeah, I have this company and we, right. we work with uh, eBay. eBay. Well, we started with eBay and PayPal, PayPal because they were, you know, together. But we we continued working with them. We created good relationships, and we eventually branched out. And like we were flying all over the country, shooting for them, and doing all these videos for them. And which yeah, is like super of, lucrative. Yeah, but there was yeah, there was a lot of money in that. <laughs> we, you're, and we can talk more about you moving yeah, to LA. Yeah. But like that kind of there was something for you at that point when you were doing that because you were making a shit ton of money, but you were like, yo, I really want to do something right, like right. super creative. And right. that, that was what pushed you to move to LA, right? Yes. Yeah, that was a big uh, thing. I just, I, like, the money was there, but, you know, I guess like the heart wasn't there. Right, right. Yeah. But so what was basically. Most of the videos you guys were doing, was that internal use? It was a lot of internal. There were some things that really is out, you know, outside, but um, a lot of it was mostly internal. Huh. So That's dope. Yeah. I mean, that's fucking like, Layout money, right? Yeah, it was pretty cool. <laughs> it's like my Google tours. It's yeah, like the same yeah, thing. Yeah. I like, had that, and then I left it to go get broke in LA. Yeah, to go, <laughs> to go, live, go live on someone's fucking floor or God something. God damn it, the worst. <laughs> um, let's go back to Young Kavika in Hawaii. Uh -huh. What what was he doing? Oh, so Hawaii. Um, this is the biggest flex, by the way. Just having two moon men <laughs> on the other fucking podcast table is like the biggest flex. <laughs> you should see them on the YouTube. Yeah, watch YouTube. Guys. You, you can just stare at these fucking amazing looking pieces of of uh, awards. Uh, award I don't even know what to say. But um, in Hawaii, um, so as you may know, Hawaii is tiny. Um, it's kind of it's not rare, but it's not a lot of people leave there. They're kind of afraid to leave there. I'm I'm assuming I'm assuming it's like very like similar to small town feeling yeah you know? right 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 right. that's weird yeah and just it was a huge step you know to leave it but growing up in hawaii um i kind of grew up always wanting to be creative i always drew i always like like to paint i always like to do that kind of stuff um 
We're talking about like leading into my career, right? Yeah, but I mean, just like what, what was young Kavika doing? Like, and then yeah, what got you into yeah. sitting being creative? Well, um, young me, I was really into sports. I played a lot of sports, and like you know, of course, if you're playing a lot of sports when you're younger, you want to be a professional sports player. So I played baseball and football. So for a lot of time, that's what I thought I was wanting to, you know, fight for and go towards. That right. was my goal. But um, after a while, I kind of got into video. Um, I was actually during my ooh, during my um, elementary school years. Um, I was part of a group. We would do like the morning announcements. It was like biweekly or something. But we would, make, with the help of our you know teacher or whatever, we would be making these videos. And a lot of them like they were kind of stupid videos, but like they were fun. And that kind of got me more into the you know creating content, creating videos for people to enjoy. But what you they, they like played it in the classroom? TV yeah, it was, or something? yeah, yeah. Like so every, it was like every week or something. That'd be or so every fun. Week. I would fuck, oh yeah, it was fucking I would fuck fun. Fuck that up. But it was it was like my first intro into like creating video. Yeah, and that was super cool, and I think that made a huge impact because, um, like you know, it just sparked. I ended up like getting my own camera. I ended up even getting into like other parts of it, like shooting as well as like watching because like, we're, we're, we're still young where it's not we're gonna be editing at like you know fourth grade or whatever right but i mean now you can do that back then it was like harder <laughs> yeah yeah no shit but um yeah we it really got me into that this and, was in fourth grade yeah it was in Holy elementary fuck. school yeah i was like part of this group and like there's a, just a small group of us and we ended up doing all this cool stuff so mm-hmm. yeah i mean you know eventually that led into um high school and by that time, I have like I had bought like my own mini DV camera that I found like probably at like, Goodwill or something, and like me and my brothers would be making videos and we'd be constantly doing that, making stupid things, <laughs> finding out new ways to you know use the camera and whatever. And it's funny too because we started shooting each other with the camera, and we had no way to edit it, so we ended up you know editing in camera. Right, same. So, I like, did the same. Yeah, shit. yeah. It's, it's <laughs> like we shoot something, we didn't like the tape, we'd go back and then re. Yeah. Re, um, um, rewind it and yeah. then shoot over it and damn like, that's funny as fuck that we all did that yeah shit. It, it was fucking it was, it was awesome and like by the time I got to high school um, so our high school it was kind of interesting because they had these things called academies and each academy was like specific for a specific career so like they had um, like health and you know all that kind of stuff and I ended up going into it was a graphics and media academy. So in high school? Yeah, in high school. Was it like a creative arts high school? Yeah. Oh, no. It was, it was, it was a regular, a creative, a regular yeah. high school in yeah. Hawaii? I don't know if they still do it, but that's what they had when we, you know, there. So if you there. took health, you, you're only studying health? You don't have to pay well, attention to other shit? No, no. You have, so you have your main, you know, math, health. I mean, math, social studies, whatever. But right. then your electives are kind of like mm, okay, towards that. You. So you're kind of with the same kids. Going right through that and it's just and it's the same thing for the graphics media which was like 2d graphics we also did like screen printing and eventually you know video right so that's yeah that. and like that's kind of what eventually kick-started me really wanting instead of you know doing sports like i said earlier but that's kind of what got me into being you know the nerd rather than the <laughs> athlete yeah. i guess but so so what what are like the classes that you got to take at that time then was uh, it actual video production classes that you could focus on? Yeah, there was a there was video production, there was a graphic design, and it kind of just was like it was pretty much the, your your last two years of high school, so like junior senior year. Right. So um, yeah, there was all those. Was it you and your brother that were making shit, or were you making shit with like the people in your class or? Oh, uh, those the people in my class. Um, we ended up actually winning. Um, so in Hawaii, they had this thing where you had to make like a PSA, and like all the kids in the high schools would like submit entries and it's like a PSA for like anti-drug anti so that was actually my our first you know award that we won for video and that was fucking dope <laughs> this just made me, we did the same shit I feel like <laughs> we did the exact same shit it's too weird what year did you graduate seven yeah okay so they must have fucking talked my what Cedar Falls High School in, in Hawaii whatever did you go school? to uh, STN was that the school in Hawaii Student, no it was like a it was like a competition thing in oh, Disneyland no uh, I think I know what it was. Because we actually, I actually won an award there. Like, we won, like, second place or something. Like, it's for not, video? Yeah. It was, like, we did, oh. we had, they give you, like, a top. It's, like, a pretty much, like, a 48-hour thing. Yeah, yeah. But, like, yeah. There was a bunch of high schools there. I don't know. Maybe you were there or not. No. We did. I never did anything cool like that. But I remember for one of our classes, we had to do a PSA. 
and I was like, I was like so into like dark shit. So I was like, <laughs> I was like, man, we really gotta like make a fucking. We need to make a wave here about right. people being homeless. That's fucking shitty. It sucks. Right, right. And it's sad. Being homeless is sad. And so I made my PSA, and it's like my homie playing guitar, and then all my other homies are like walking by, and they're just like not fucking with him, and he's just playing guitar, and it just, <laughs> I think it just like slowly zooms in. It's like, don't be homeless. <laughs> 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 and, and, I, and, and it was like it was whatever i shot a 70 i thought it was sick because i could oh, shoot shit. 60 and i was like yeah, yeah yeah dude when oh no that was college that wasn't high school that was college still <laughs> yeah because i feel like i got a late start like i was doing dv shooting and i was doing you know filming all of our skateboarding videos right, with fish right. eye and fucking yeah, making yeah. our own videos with like just all the cameras that we had we even had those dvd cameras remember those those mm-hmm. things fucking sucked but um <laughs> yeah yeah we'd film all the snowboarding shit but then like i would just try to figure out how to edit it and that was kind of like high school gist but i didn't become like a real filmmaker until college <laughs> you know what i mean i was making movies fucking don't be homeless psa <laughs> don't be homeless <laughs> so when you did that you guys won what do you win just clout pretty much yeah i mean because we were it was interesting too because we were like pretty much a brand new school on the island like when i first started there and um there was this one school that always won like every year so just knowing that i beat that school like they were known for their you know um for their media and they would always go to like nationals and do crazy stuff but like i always wanted to beat them so i ended up you know beating them getting second place or whatever still and I, I thought that was pretty cool. That'd be so, so fun. I wish I could, I wish like I could do it over again. And if that was a thing, that'd be just like, I hope they're doing that a lot now. Like having competitions like that, yeah, they yeah, should yeah. compete media divisions between they schools should. like that. Like that's yeah. no different than football. You know right, what I mean? Right, like right, right, right. fuck yeah. them up at West high or whatever. Just make it a thing. Yeah. yeah. That's tight. Huh? Yeah. Damn. Makes me think. Um, so okay first off let's go back to what you're talking about in hawaii it's like you're you're taught you you guys sound like it's being from a like similar to being a small town Mm -hmm. from iowa like a lot of people stay there Mm -hmm. and don't really leave there's nothing um that you know about outside of that Mm -hmm. world right for you i feel like in hawaii like to me hawaii is just overpopulated with tourists right so don't wouldn't wouldn't it be like you guys have a lot of reflect like no one's coming to iowa to be mm-hmm. to be like like we'd have like two foreign exchange students and like i'm from paris and they'll be like what the fuck is that like man you know what i mean <laughs> right, and right, like right. no one really talked to those people and i would just be like yo what's what's life like over there you know right but in hawaii you have everyone from everywhere on earth coming there and flooding your fucking island all the time right like i feel like you'd be bound to kind of hear about other shit or like be right. cultured on other things just easier maybe i don't know i guess you probably no i mean I, th- that makes sense but at the same time hawaii is already culturally diverse i mean like i'm mixed race you know right. but I, I guess it makes sense that but a lot of people they still just want to stay there mm. like it, there's it, hawaii is so isolated you know yeah there's like nothing around it but ocean so like it, it's kind of terrifying thinking you know leaving the island and all that and i i get why people get homesick i mean i did when i first moved <laughs> moved away but then i realized that the world is so much bigger and there's poke everywhere so the <laughs> disgusting <laughs> man that poke is disgusting dave knows what i'm talking about <laughs> that shit is gross really i heard it's the shit in hawaii oh heard... yeah that's where it comes from that's, oh okay that's i thought you were just saying you didn't like it in general what's no, like the, the what's like poke the top is, three yeah. fire ass foods to get in hawaii real poke okay uh Ah, I, 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 was it's what like, just because it's fresher fish or something it's fresh and it's just the way that they make it it's i mean we've been making it since forever it, it was always like a you know like a tailgate food and like a barbecue food like everybody would have always have poke damn really yeah like we always ate that damn it was it was everywhere that's so, so weird yeah that's weird seeing it you know white people eat it now oh <laughs> uh what what uh what other foods are over there like what what else is fire in hawaii um i'm pretty sure a lot of people never ate like authentic hawaiian food so hawaiian food's dope which is what like what do they eat like you know the you know when you um think of a generic luau you think of the pig in the ground and stuff but yeah you know the legit stuff you know and that kind of genre of food mm. is dope dude i need to go to hawaii i can't believe yeah. i've never been there mm. 
it's cool. I'll, no, it's fucking. Everyone goes and they come back and like, oh my god, that's fucking <laughs> great. Maybe it's just because your hospitality is on ten, but uh, I don't know. Yeah, I just want to go surf some shit and fucking do this a bunch. Yeah, and then it's accepted there. Yeah, I think it'd be cool. <laughs> Have you ever seen the movie? I'm mean, I'm derailing for two minutes, guys. So bear with me, but I just need to talk about Hawaii a little bit longer. That's cool. Have you ever seen the movie Surfs Up? I fucking love that movie. Me too. That thing is hilarious. It's so good. <laughs> I watched that movie three or four times in theaters. Like I, I swear to God. <laughs> I took I I would go and I died and I was loving it and then I would go and be like, Oh, this person needs to see this shit yeah. and I would bring my other friend back just to be like, I know you'll think these parts are funny. Like you ha I need you to experience yeah, this yeah. joy that I experienced yesterday or whatever yeah i fucking watch it and i own it on three different dvds i think <laughs> the, i stole two of them the over. way that they shot it it's like a documentary and then it, yeah. that, it's that much funnier it's just it's it's hilarious it's like it's like um what's that disney movie the skateboard one or the uh roller roller rink uh what the fuck's that movie yeah you don't know what I'm which talking? one brink brink yeah it's like that but in a cartoon version where you're like married to it a little bit like you want to see these people yeah, like yeah, 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 win yeah. a competition and they're the oh, underdogs yeah. johnny tsunami too. johnny tsunami fucking weird um all right let's get back to being <laughs> creative sorry guys just surf's check up. out the movie watch, surf's up is hilarious there's a chick a little chicken that fucking surfs and he's like <laughs> he's he's the stoner chicken that the kids all enjoy has <laughs> made as a kid's movie and like oh my god that shit is fucking classic uh so okay going mm -hmm. from high school to college you went to school in Ari arizona correct okay so but you go straight from high school to or did you do any community college or anything in hawaii or no um why'd you want to why'd you decide to leave okay so um again during high school um i was dabbling in the video stuff and i thought it was cool but i still want to play baseball so i i, I tried to um i'm pretty pretty much pretty much walk on to one of the universities in hawaii so i got a scholarship not for baseball but i um i want I, you know i want to stay in hawaii and play baseball there so i went for like a semester and just i just hated it <laughs> what like playing I, baseball so, i mean i tried out but like i could tell that you know i'm, I'm not gonna get anywhere with this and like just the i don't know just the i guess quote-unquote university atmosphere it's just like i don't want to do this and it wasn't like the best university for me i guess um hmm. so i was like i just like changed my mind like okay like I'm, I'm going to the mainland i have to get out of here i have to do something else and i think i'm what, going to arizona <laughs> yeah i mean <laughs> why well partially my, my parents actually went they both they actually met in arizona oh um wow yeah they both left hawaii to go to school in arizona and um you know that's how they met so i mean that was kind of the connection i just wanted to get out of um hawaii is that so. like a popular place to go when you come from hawaii like uh, not not really i mean it kind of was just like a throw a dart at the map map thing and whoever like mm -hmm. accepts me at, in college you know but the college i got accepted to was it was you know it was like a specific thing for it was a trade school pretty much ish it was like a like a i don't know how do you say it it just um you get your bachelor's faster than a four-year university oh wow so like i found that like yeah i want that because i want to like hurry up and start making money right you know? <clears throat> so like i i found that and it was like a it was i could learn video production which you know i ended up wanting to do which and you discovered by being there or you knew when you were going there like i want to go there for video production so I can yeah learn. no yeah I, I knew because of baseball didn't really work out or you know happen to work out um yeah. i wanted to do my second thing which is video production or right. making movies or whatever right so yeah go in there and then um like my initial goal i guess for the whole thing was i want to you know be in hollywood i want to make movies that's my thing so like i'm gonna go to school and then i'm gonna try and get there so yeah that's pretty much hmm. i i do you feel like going to a college that has a video production program is a great second option if you cannot afford to go to film school being that you haven't gone to film school but that was your like you and i both experienced a college that has video production would it what, would you do it again would you do all that again um with the knowledge i have now probably not because i think the biggest thing i learned from the school i went to is networking mm -hmm. um like a lot of the things i learned at the school i could have learned by myself and i pretty much did because you know i would they would teach, teach us the basic things but i would like keep going and be like i'm going to learn this and this and this and this and like the software and stuff but 
the biggest thing was the networking. So like, I mean, if you're good at networking, networking, I don't think you need to, you know, specifically go to a college or right. film school or whatever. But um, I think it does benefit you in a way that you're surrounded by people that have the same goal, I guess. Hmm. And that helped me get to where I am, I guess, today. Right. So I think that, for me, that was the biggest takeaways from it. Like, I didn't, like, it didn't teach me how to be super dope at, you know, doing this with After Effects or whatever. I taught that myself. Right. Like, not to be, you know, whatever. But, you know, it was, I, I think I would do it again just because I'm not good at um, networking without, you know, <laughs> being around people that already are. Or that are searching for yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, yeah. I, I mean, feel like, yeah, yeah that makes sense because... I think that what it does is it provides like a space to, to start. Yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, Which yeah. is cool if you don't have a clue right. how to start. I think now we're getting to an era where you can start online and there's right. a lot of like community right. feeling vibes that you would get out of a college. You know what I mean? Right, like, right, right. I don't know. I always question that. Like, would I do it again or was that a good second option? Because it was the same thing. Like they're teaching. Well, yeah. Yeah. Even that too. I think, I feel like even though it was not that long ago, it was still a different time. Like now right. you can do everything online. Yeah. Like before it's, it was still kind of like, you know, not all online yet. Yeah. So like it, it kind of transformed while we were in school kind of thing. But I mean, I, I feel like there's a lot of opportunities now to like not have to go to college. Black with no cream. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, like if, if there's a lot of resources you can do and I feel like you don't have to, but it's just, um, you know, you're going to need to go and reach out to, to find people that are going to help you succeed in it so which is the same thing to me as you sitting in a classroom and them just providing that person yeah, yeah, for yeah, you because yeah. that's all it, that's all you're doing is you're paying an institution to provide you with a curriculum and a person that can guide you through that right, shit. right 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 but it's up to you to like a take it a, a level farther and you like you said go and learn the fucking software inside and out mm -hmm. where they're only teaching you the bear the bear like top shell of the software you know what i mean like i was right. doing the same thing but it was like they're teaching me how to fucking roll a XLR cable. And I was like, <laughs> I actually never learned how to do that. And I think I actually <laughs> didn't get that right on the, uh, on the test that we did in class. That was on test. It was like, okay, you have, here's like five things in production that you have to learn how to do. And it was like, roll an XLR cable, how to put the fucking DV camera back, how to dump a DV tape. I'm like, fucking Jesus Christ. The people are learning about that. I own a 70. I got docked points. I think I said this on the podcast before, but we took a doc class. A documentary class. No, it was a... Uh, what the fuck was it? I don't remember what it was, but I took a class and I handed it in. I shot it on a 7D and all the cameras that we rented were DV right. cameras. Like the the cool ones, you know what I mean? And um, But I shot mine on my camera and I turned it in on a USB stick and I got docked two points or some certain amount of points because I didn't turn it in on a DV tape. Yes, that's, well, that's how I that's reacted. How, see, I, it, it's in, interesting too because it's like, it's it's an art, you know. It's not like you need to do specific steps to get to the final yeah. product. So that, that's like a weird thing to, to get docked points off. Of. I mean, if you if you're if what you turn in was dope as fuck, right? Like, why are you getting docked? You know, that's what know. I'm saying. I'm like, dude, I literally paid to have this nice camera, and right. you want me to ingest it onto a tape, right? So you can plug it in and play it like it was the the issue was that she couldn't play it on the projector i'm like motherfucker it's hooked up to the computer <laughs> this goes to the computer that goes up there too you show us the computer every day during right. class on the projector <laughs> fuck that shit was crazy i couldn't believe that i was like all right i'm gonna take this one i fucking hate school <laughs> and i told my mom i'm dropping out i'm dropping out all the time fucking worse wait but so did, you did i didn't drop out oh, i okay, made you it you kept going no yeah my mom I, I, I feel so bad because they put me through college uh, and I was just I didn't understand what that meant at the time. <laughs> yeah, I didn't understand yeah, yeah. how much money they were spending. I was just a fucking ignorant little punk dude that hated that shit and got into rap and just wanted to rap all the time <laughs> and fucking <laughs> tour during the breaks and fucking live my life. <laughs> oh, shout out to the mommies then. Shout out to to, to me mama. It <laughs> um, actually it was really funny because I really did want to drop out and um, oh man, what was who was it that did this shit? They made me feel. Uh, damn, I can't think of, I can't. What do you mean? Um, I don't know. I just totally blanked on who it was that peer pressured me into staying. 
my aunt Lisa. Mm. She's not really my aunt, but she is. She was like, wrote me a letter about how much it means to my mom that I'm going to school and my mom must clearly vented to her, which I'm now realizing <laughs> she's talking shit about me complaining. <laughs> and, uh, she wrote me some nice ass letter about how much it means to my mom and like how proud they are that I'm right. doing it. And I was like, fuck it. I'll do another <laughs> two semesters. Like I can do this shit. And I, yeah, I don't know. And so basically I went to her. <laughs> so well. I was just a dick anyway. Um, <laughs> so when you're at school, you, where, did, when did you develop your business? When did that happen? It's like, what's interesting to me is that you said, I want to go to school and get it done as fast as possible so I can make money. Like, I wasn't even thinking. Right. Like, I didn't have that mindset. Right. We'd have job fairs where they bring these people in and you see all these people that are working in the industry that graduated right. from the school and and you're like, oh, that's cool. They own a video production company. That's pretty dope. Like, I, I could work with them sometime. But right. I never thought, like, I could do it or I could... I can make money from this shit, which is so dumb that I was in college not understanding that. No, that's, that's true. So when I started, I kind of was open ended. I just wanted to make video. I wanted to make film. I wanted to just make moving pictures, you know? So I, I had no idea what I wanted to do exactly until like, as I started, cause everybody, you know, they, everybody wants to be on set. Everybody wants to, you know, run the camera and be with the stars and the celebrities. And like, I kind of was turned off by that. <laughs> I don't want to do that just because everyone wants to do that. Right. So that's why I kind of like, over time, I kind of realized I want to do post mm. because I feel like that's a lot, um, especially during college, everyone's looking for like the editor or the, can you make this thing catch on fire or something? And nobody can do that. And then so... Um, when he says post people, he's talking about post production, which is like editing and VFX uh, yeah. beyond that, the, if you don't uh, know. Yeah. Go on. But I mean, um, so like I, I tried, me and my friends, we would... Um, I, th I hope I'm answering your question, but me and my friends, uh, we were poor as fuck. We were, you know, it was, I had like a, I was making minimum wage at this stupid part-time job. And like, we would spend all our money on making films like on the weekend. Mm -hmm. So like, we had this little team and I thought it was cool because we had this little team. We had like a director dude. We had this guy who could like act kind of. We had this guy who could do makeup <laughs> kind of. Kind <laughs> of. And then, and that kind of forced me to be the post guy. Like, oh yeah, I'll, I'll cut it. I'll, I'll put, you know, I'll add, the sound effects i'll do all this so like, right. that kind of pushed me to do more posts and i started loving it mm. like originally i want to be an editor because i thought that was like the easy thing yeah <clears throat> and all that but um you know while i'm doing this i'm still going to school i'm still learning you know all the little elements and all from other people and stuff but um we were talking about <laughs> to me <laughs> jobs like uh, taking it to going becoming to like something that could make you money at some point right, right yeah so um yeah i'm learning all these things and um so, towards the end of college, <clears throat> um, uh, eBay actually came down, and they were looking for, um, they actually went to ASU, which was like right down the street from us, so Arizona State University, and they're looking for, you know, people to help them film something. So, like, they were looking for students that were studying? Yeah, film. they were looking for film students at ASU right. um, to uh, help shoot something or whatever, but thankfully... ASU didn't end up responding. <laughs> what the hell? Yeah, it was it was weird. Like you, you want to go to this big school and like you know it's eBay. Yeah. And why don't they? So they ended up finding our school, which is like a tiny little school. Actually, it doesn't even it they closed down like damn years ago. <laughs> but um, they found us, and then I just so happened to be again going back to networking. I was really close with the career services people, and like they got me a lot of jobs. They got me a lot of internships because of the fact I, was, I had a good relationship with them. I was able to find these jobs. So like. It, my original there were just like little projects but this was like the big one their job was to help you yeah. find jobs yeah yeah but so like do you think that they found themselves a backup job when that school closed yeah i Zing. mean they're they're all good i'm still like cool with them we still talk to them really? and so chad and amy shout out to chad and amy <laughs> uh but they're they're the ones that ebay is hitting up directly yeah talking okay cool yeah so um, me and my partner his name, uh roy pena um so me and him we were we were the ones that kind of just kept talking with him and he and i both have like similar skill sets like we know how to run a camera we know how to light we know how to do all that and like we were um constantly with the career services people because you know we wanted to get jobs we wanted right. to make money so, so we like you know we made it a thing that we had that relationship with them so like uh yeah the the ebay people ended up contacting them and you know of course we're the first people they think of because oh yeah you know they're always here bothering right, us right. you know yeah, yeah. so um yeah, so like that was the big thing. And during that time, I already had, I was working my part-time job, my minimum wage job. Doing what? 
I was like bagging groceries, dog. Right. <laughs> Tired. Um, but um, Adam DeGrosse did that same shit. Uh, yeah, Post Malone's was... photographer. Oh yeah. Yeah, he was bagging groceries right. literally until like recently. Started from the bottom. But yeah. so from there, um, I was also working this. Uh, I was doing like editing for this company, and I was like, it wasn't that good of a job or whatever. So like I had like part time jobs here and there. But then, um, yeah, when the eBay people happened, that's when we started, you know. Creating a company? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, at first, we didn't know how to do that. It's not like I went to school for business. Right, right, right. I went to school for video. Yeah. So I think that's why it's such a big thing is because Roy and I, we both learned on our own how to do this shit. Right. You know, over a course of however long we've been, I think 2011 we started. Damn, that's crazy. Over the course of that, we had to learn how to fucking do taxes, what the fucking LLC is, you know, all that stuff by ourselves we didn't go to school for it we had to figure it out ourselves and like you know it became more so i thought that's i think that's pretty cool that is fucking tight yeah it's pretty cool that's crazy i so with when you did when the ebay situation happened were they like looking to actually physically hire someone or were they just looking for like interns um was it a paid job like why would they go to the school just I, i think originally it started as they were just looking for cheap labor kind of thing because it was pretty much we were going to be shooting a a project they were constructing and then like just um filming uh, i mean creating these really simple videos like oh this is what's happening on this month and then next month and then next month so it started like that so i'm pretty sure that's all they wanted but um the guy that hired us um he's he's kind of he was into video too he he was into music as well so he he was very creative but he saw that i guess the potential in us yeah so he saw that we could do this, so we can do that, we can do that. And he ended up getting more, um, instead of just doing these super corporate videos, he started getting more uh, imaginative, I guess, and creative with what we want. Like, oh, we can have this thing, and like we can blow it up, and we can do this, and do it. And like, yeah, we're down, we're done, let's do all that. Yeah, that's tight. So like, he saw what we had, so he ended up keeping us on for longer, and then you know, getting us for more... Um, for more projects and that's when we decided you know oh we have to you know we have to make a company out of this to protect ourselves and da, 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 da. so yeah that's kind of how it started was there headquarters in arizona or something no they're in they're in uh san, san jose but so, they just were building something in phoenix oh okay i got so, you yeah so I mean, then by default you start traveling to all the other centers yeah or something like that yeah. right and just we would um because of course ebay i don't want to like get too much into it but right, ebay right. is um what they're pretty much what we're doing is simplified is um so ebay and all you know tech companies they run on data centers and which we, are insane yeah it's they're just huge computers pretty much that run their you know infrastructure i mean they had in, infrastructure that run their shit you yeah know? but um we would be going because ebay and all tech companies they have them all over the world they have them in the weirdest locations you would never know that you know they're all hidden because nobody wants to you know show this is where all, all our information f- runs through. <laughs> yeah true but um, yeah, so we would be flying all over and shooting videos for you know specific locations like everywhere um, in the country. So that's crazy. Yeah, it's pretty fun. So what what were like some big mistakes that you you know you learned a lot from <clears throat> at, in the early ages of like building an LLC, or did you ever find yourself getting fucked, or did the dude that was kind of hiring you out was he kind of guiding you guys? Like, did he know that you were yeah. very new and green? No, he 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 didn't. He had fell for nothing it? to do with us. I'm I, I'm glad so. I'm not saying I'm the smartest person, but I'm glad that Roy and I are pretty clever. We're pretty creative. And I mean, um, we're pretty smart. Yeah. You know, we, we will we'll adapt to situations. So like, you know, we'll find out, okay, we need to be able to spend money while we're on those trips. So we should get a credit card. You know, we should do this. We should do that. Mm. So we had to learn that ourselves. I think the, um, a big thing about it was um, making sure we had enough money to run the business which we didn't have <laughs> because we're just starting, you know? Yeah. So like, it was pretty much, we started and I'm like, holy shit, we're making blah, blah, blah per video. This is crazy. Were they giving you the budgets? Yeah. Oh, see, that's a fucking layup too. If they're just like, this is how much money we have, you don't have to try yeah, to yeah. decide what you're worth. Well, even that we were like trying to figure out, okay, how much are we going to charge them? And we're like thinking like, you know, 20 bucks an hour or yeah. whatever. And like that, we thought 20 bucks was a lot. Fuck <laughs> yeah, it was. You know? I remember getting paid $20 an hour. I was like, <laughs> And like it, it got crazier because of the fact that, like, of course, going back to the career services people that we were hanging out with, we're like, how much should we charge them? And they're like, oh, we think maybe 30, 30, I think 30, 35 an hour. And we thought that was wild. Like, 
are you serious? <laughs> they're going to say fucking no. But, you know, but like, you know, we ended up doing that and they're like, yeah, sure, whatever. And like, it kind of just went from there. Wow. I mean, we, you know, ended up doing more than that, but yeah. Right. But like starting out, yeah, you start making like $35. You're like, yeah. That's wow. nuts. You know, you, and whatever. you're in college. Did you finish college? Yeah, I finished. Right. I so got like my, my bachelor's. So how much time were you dedicating to the business when you were in college? Um, we got like the job maybe three months before we ended college. Oh, cool. So like we were already working. So right. like, we were lucky as fuck. Like I want to say lucky because you know it's a totally awesome opportun- opportunity. But you know I I feel like we put ourselves in that situation. Yeah, right. Like, we got there. So I thought you know that was pretty cool. But I feel like it's I, I don't know it's got to be pretty rewarding to like have a company like eBay be one of your clients right out the gate or PayPal yeah. or whoever you want. You yeah. know what I mean? I, like, I was pretty stoked. <laughs> I would have been fucking that. going bananas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, I don't know. That's just like so big. I mean, right. it's eBay. Right. Like, you know what I mean? Like these are companies that you use all the time right. or you, at the time we use them all the time. Um, so going from that point, like you get out of college, how long do you work with eBay and PayPal and, and companies? Were you doing any other client work or was it strictly that was like your bread and butter? Well, yeah, that was, that was, we were strictly with eBay. They were giving us enough work for us to like, we don't need anything else. Yeah. <laughs> um, by that time, like right out of the college, we were already like, we had like at least two, three trips a month, like flying out and doing these things. And of course, like we had to figure out ways to like, you know, how are we paying for these trips and da da And like, you know, we had to build the business around that. But um, yeah, I mean, what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> how, uh, how how long did you do that before moving? Like to, how long were you working with PayPal and, and eBay until you decided to move to LA? Because or no, because you, you eventually moved to Utah, right? Which was for the Same business. Same thing. We were following. Um, so eBay finished what they had to do in Phoenix, and they ended up moving to uh, Salt Lake City, Utah. Oh, so it takes them a long time to do whatever the yeah. Thing it was is. probably two and a half years. My friend's dad did uh, built um, a data center for Verizon in florida and he ended up being there for a fucking long ass time mm-hmm. it, way over what they projected the time was going to be We're like damn like they bought a house down there wow. for the time being and then well i mean even that out. first project they're still adding shit to it so like yeah. we still get work from that that's so, crazy yeah it's pretty cool <laughs> um but you moved to utah for that job like for yeah, the we, next we were job. just we were just following the money basically um and yeah we just uh during that time we were trying to branch out more because we we're like by that time we we're like kind of getting tired because this is not what we went to school for we didn't go to school just to do corporate videos right you know so we we're trying to find ways to branch out but i mean it was the ebay stuff was just so easy that like we didn't have to do that <laughs> so a lot of the money i made like i just like pretty much traveled and i like, did thing like that's where my money was going just traveling right so um yeah so i don't know like a couple years into salt lake city we found out they were going to go to the next location was going to be uh, Reno. Reno it was going to be in Reno, and then um, I don't know. I've never been to Reno, but I I, I don't care if I ever <laughs> do yeah. go to Reno. But um, at that point, I was like thinking, do I want to spend the next three years, you know, doing this? You know, this is not what I want to do. This is, you know, I'm pretty much following what you know my guy is telling me to do. Right. And like it's it's not exciting like yeah i'm getting paid i'm getting this money i'm you know super comfortable but um yeah so i started thinking about moving to hollywood which i originally wanted to do like since high school kind of thing and making movies so um that thought kind of came, came into my head but i was terrified because <laughs> uh this place is expensive it's it's there's it's so much uh competition right like i'm nobody you know what am i gonna do on all that <clears throat> so yeah, it, it kind of like evolved from a little idea to like getting bigger and bigger to the point where like I'm like, I have to do it. And like, it's just talking with people that already lived here. And like a lot of my friends that um, I would make those films in like college, they already lived here. Oh, so they like, did? They moved? Yeah, they moved here pretty much after college. Was a lot of the people you went to college with, was that like their aspirations was to be in LA and make movies? Uh, or uh, Yeah, a, a lot of them, yeah, want that, wanted that. I mean, it's just like, a chosen few that are here. <laughs> right, right, right. But, um, yeah, so, like, you know, I kept in contact with them, and they kept telling, you have to come, you have to come, but, like, it's, I was still terrified of it, because it's just, like, I didn't think I was good enough, I didn't think, you know, all these things. So, um, yeah, I mean, eventually, um, 
one of my friends ended up getting me a hooking me up with someone that actually worked here and they're like um i'm trying not to like say a lot of names right um and that i could get a job like potentially you know in hollywood or la and like that's a big thing because <laughs> i feel like a lot of people come here and they're like they work like at you know like a, a starbucks or something for like five years until they finally land something All right but if i can move here right now and have a job now that'd be pretty awesome so that's kind of what happened and i kind of just my mom flew up from hawaii and she helped me move everything and i got here and i ended up you know interviewing at that job and i got it within like the week i moved here damn so yeah and it was like one of the hardest things though because um like leaving not leaving the company but just saying i can't do it anymore with my partner because um yeah i was wondering how that worked yeah out. yeah so like i was like terrified to tell him that because you know we were pretty much set like he he kind of like was starting his family kind of thing too and like this is easy money for us kind of yeah. but um like i i didn't want to be <laughs> you know part of that but um we kind of finally said you know we kind of mutually agreed that you know we should start doing something else because we've been doing this for uh, whatever five six years and um i think what was dope though is we, we, we uh, maintained that relationship with the companies we worked with and we still to this day work with them just you know not full time or whatever we just have them always popping up with projects that they need that entire time you guys were like a freelance company that they would hire outsource for yeah, jobs right yeah, okay yeah. you were never like an employee of their no got it but i mean like yeah we we used a lot of their uh we, we were like pretty much exclusive to them so right. it's like yeah cool so so he your partner ended up leaving as well yeah so my partner ended up moving to austin texas and now he has um He's doing pretty well down there, and he's we st he has a I think he has a full time job, and he's working on his shit. Um, he's pretty much same thing as me, he kind of like a. I think he had a full time job, but he's like working a lot of freelance stuff now. Right. So like we're both kind of doing our own thing, but um, yeah, he has his family down there, and then I'm here now. Right. So what what was the job? What were you doing? Editing when you first came here. Um, I you was, said that you came here, applied, like you you did an inter in, Jesus. You did an interview right. when you came to LA, and right. then right away you got the fucking job? Yeah, I interviewed with this guy named Addison Allen. Oh, <laughs> my boy Addison! Addison! Yeah, and... Really? Yeah. yeah. Oh, this was straight yes. to riveting. Yes, oh. I, that's how I got it, yeah. Damn, for some reason I thought you did something else before. No. So who... Addison was your plug? No, so my friend, um, Chris, he knew someone that... I guess the, the, he knew uh, Max. Oh, yeah, right. And I guess they were looking for someone to work at uh, Riveting. Right. And um, so Chris, my friend from college, he plugged me with Max, who ended up, you know, introduced me to Addison, who I guess Max kind of referred me. Right. And um, yeah, so I finally got, I got that interview within the week I moved in, uh, moved to L.A., and Man, how lucky is that shit? Just to have a job right out the gate. That's crazy. It is, and like you know, at, at a at this company too, like this. Uh, was I there before you were? I think you were like maybe a month. Yeah, because I remember you. I just remember seeing you and be like, "Who the fuck is this dude?" Yeah, because I, I knew Max for a little <laughs> bit, and then Max like had lunch, and then he ended up quitting, and mm -hmm. he left, and then I think you showed up. I think I you was replaced there, him, right? Yeah, I was there the day that he. Oh, okay, yeah. So I had been there for a little bit. How long were you there? Like a couple um, months. Though, like pretty much off chris brown's doc we were there for what were you you were shooting with him right <laughs> um the doc for chris's doc i shot some bts i didn't shoot i would just be there for the interviews for the edit purpose of like writing with andrew right. like me and andrew were like making sure we had the questions dialed in and you know what i mean right, i was right, just right, like right. assisting in that sense so it was just oh. like all hands on deck i just did everything uh but I don't know what, to, what when I actually got there. I can't remember when I moved out. It was July 2015 or something. That's when you went? Yeah. Yeah. June or July. I don't know. Right. Because we were there for Five, a while. Four years already. Yeah, I know. It's crazy. <laughs> um, so you get there and right away, what are some of the jobs you get put on? Um, so I got hired as an uh, assistant editor. editor, uh, And that's where I met JR Strickland. Shout out uh, to JR. Yeah. JR is awesome. But um, I think the first first video i helped with was the liquor video for chris brown mm -hmm. and like it was just that was awesome like i'm here knowing that you know i'm working on a chris brown i'm so used to because i would 
I would like wreck YouTube with videos of my dog. And <laughs> like I would get in a VFX idea and like do it with my dog. I'd do a stupid video with my dog. Right. He had and, a whole series. But now like yeah, I'm not, like now I'm working with you know, this is Chris Brown. I grew up with Chris Brown. I know Chris Brown, you know. Right. He's like our age or my age or whatever. And like just that was pretty nuts. So I mean that was yeah. cool. <laughs> I know. I remember it being so weird because it's like like the day that I was on set with him for like the seven streeter video. And then I was just like, damn, that's that dude right there. Like he's <laughs> yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. fucking famous and shit. That's yeah, crazy. Yeah, yeah. And then just to be in the process and then you like build a relationship with them. You know what I mean? Right, Over right, time, right. it's cool. Right. Um, so you did that video and what were you doing? Just like setting up the project and like tedious shit? Pretty or? much. But of course I didn't want to be an assistant editor. <clears throat> um, I was just, you know, I want to make, the special effects and so i learned that jr is a wizard at special effects so like i got to flex too because of the fact that i know he you know knew about it so like we could both bounce ideas off it so we like eventually we were like dude we're both badass at vfx you know and we were you know i kind of showed him what i can do and you know we kind of bounce ideas off i think that was cool because um yeah we ended up doing a lot of vfx together at that company so did did you, you would get VFX credit, but you just weren't, you were just a... Pretty much. Yeah, right. Okay, I got you. What, uh, like, you end up doing, what other videos? You did, did you do, like, you did a Lady Gaga one, right? Did you guys do something with Lady Gaga? Yeah, we did, uh, we actually did, uh, we did a lot of, like, beauty work, visual effects on the Lady Gaga, uh, the, uh, what the hell was that guy's name? Um, the fashion dude, Tom Ford. Mm, yeah. So uh, I guess they had like some kind of visual fashion show and we ended up helping with um, like a Lady Gaga video and like doing a lot of beauty and cleanup and stuff. Even it wasn't like pretty VFX. It was more like a, you know. I remember those like black streaks on the floor. Or yeah, something. you guys got rid of all that. that. I was like, He's, stupid. these, him, JR, like the way these motherfuckers can make shit disappear in videos, it is unreal. <laughs> it is fucking unreal. Mm-hmm. I loved in JR, like JR's podcast, he talks, well, I remember sitting there when he did it, but in one of Chris Brown's videos, they they needed to replace um, like Coca-Cola logos or something. Mm-hmm. Like we're at a gas station and there's yeah, Coke. Yeah. So he swapped them all out and was putting like fake logos, but then he put like his niece's name yeah. in the poster or whatever, which is so fucking tight to me because you can literally like recreate the world. Oh, yeah, I actually did that with the, one of the Chris, I, I put my name backwards on the, yeah. the wall or something. And remember when we did, uh, <laughs> I think in the doc, isn't it, it uh, remember the scene where he like trips out and he like fucking yells at the valet and we we show it's like YouTube and we zoom out. Didn't we? Isn't our names? In oh there? yeah, yeah, yeah. We put a little <laughs> Easter eggs in there. That yeah. Was, yeah, yeah. There's a bunch of names in there. Damn, I forgot about that shit. Yeah, I should go watch that. Yeah, um, we made it look like we were like in the comments on the YouTube video, like we replaced all yeah, the old, yeah, yeah. those videos with <laughs> our shit, like our names or whatever. Uh, <laughs> that was fun. Damn, that's crazy. What are some other projects? I mean, like working with Chris was crazy just because that. Consu- I mean, from the point where you got there, it became it was all Chris Brown. Like mm-hmm. all, he was like our main right. thing that we did for that whole first year, basically. Right. Um, like how did, I don't know, how did, how did that progression happen for you to kind of like showcase to, to everyone else that you do VFX and then for people, cause like when we did, uh, fine by me, that music video, like it was literally me and Kavika <laughs> staying up all night long <laughs> and I'm cutting the video. Like we just had a session with Chris, Chris left. I'm like fine tuning the edit beyond mm-hmm. what we came up with with him sending i think i was like as i'm editing i'm sending you plates so mm-hmm. i we're dishing off footage to the other mm-hmm. computer so he's in the other room and we're just going back and forth and he gave me a vfx plate <laughs> a plate for people who don't know can you describe what a plate is a plates just pretty much after the the cuts the edits locked um you know each vfx there's you know there's vfx in each scene or you know there's going to be vfx applied to each you know cut in the edit but the plate's pretty much just the raw cut in the timeline right so yeah the plate is just him sending me that raw um cut in the timeline for me to add the vfx to right so if there's ever anything i need kavika to like do something to i would kick out a quick time four 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 right um which is like the highest quality version of that clip that i could send him and then he can apply his vfx and then he'll send me the clip back and it should be if I don't fucking touch anything, as easy as just dropping that clip back in and it replaces my old clip. So right. we call those plates. Right. So 
I would literally be creating plates and sending them over to him and then he would send the VFX back to me and then I would do it and then we'd try it. We'd have notes and Addison, Alan, shout out to Addison, <laughs> would be sitting there like coaching us to stay awake <laughs> because we had to have the fucking cut done by like 8 a.m. or yeah. something. Remember I, I had to, to go to MTV. They had to like, drop it yeah, on MTV at a specific time or something. And uh, so we had to hit this deadline. So we were literally finishing the video all the way up to this deadline. Right, right. And like I think... I would be rendering or exporting. So I would like go take a nap for like 20 minutes and then Addison would like set an alarm to wake me up to be like, Hey, the render's done. You have to finish rendering the next part or something. And it would just be so fucking crazy. And then Addison got a fucking car accident <laughs> and then he left, he left riveting to go home, got T-boned by some girl who blew a fucking red light wrecked his car and then just went back he ubered back to the office and then just kept working because that shit woke him up that was nuts i I honestly can remember that specific day like i think we finished the video and i don't know if i went up by myself or if you went up did we go up to the rooftop for the the sunrise yeah and we just like we're sitting up there and i I remember just going up there and be like fuck i'm in la man this is crazy like the amount of shit we were doing Uh uh that no one knows about Mm -hmm. is something i don't know it's hard for me it's weird because it's so nostalgic nostalgic for me because it's like talking about this I can remember the sunset you know what I mean like I remember being like I just need to get home and sleep but (laughs) at the same time I'm like damn I can't believe I just did that you know what I mean it was yeah it was pretty exhilarating I guess it was was such a cool feeling even though like you know we're killing ourselves physically (laughs) this is this is for the like we want to finish this Addison almost literally (laughs) (laughs) almost literally Addison yeah I, I, I get I get that man fuck that shit was crazy yeah we really did push ourselves it it, it became difficult because it's like you want to apply so much of your expertise and do all this shit and to the point where you have to find like a happy balance i think Mm -hmm. that that's what's cool is that we all kind of were able to grow and understand that at a certain Mm -hmm. point like like now to me now it seems more important than ever to like try to find some sort of balance in my life whether it's like an hour to like go to the gym at least like a couple times a week or something like or take a trip. Like I still can't do that. Mm -hmm. I still haven't like in my head, I'm making an excuse that my parents are coming tomorrow. And then that's my vacation that I'm just not going to work for like four days. Yeah. Yeah. But I need to go to a fucking beach and like just chill with Lauren somewhere. Fucking cool. Right. right. But I just never do. Like there's always a reason not to. And that Mm -hmm. shit sucks. That's fucking difficult. Especially back then it was like, I don't know how I would have done it if Lauren lived here. Like it wouldn't have been fucking possible. Right. Like we literally would be working like, Mm -hmm every hour of the day mm-hmm. damn so what was some of like your your favorite achievements during that era um i think at first it was getting nominated um we got nominated for the you know the chris brown video series yeah. and i thought that was so sick because it's too. like i just got here yeah like within a year oh shit i'm nominated we're nominated for a vma you know but of course we lost to of course who did we lose to the Beyonce. queen <laughs> my boss we lost to beyonce yeah we of did of course but um I think that was a huge thing because, you know, it was it was a big thing for me because it was a series of videos. And like, I had a huge hand in, like, the huge. VFX of it and, like, a lot of the things. And, like, that's when I first started, like, being able to, you know, interact with a legit celebrity. And I thought that was a big deal, too, yeah. because, like, I have interacted with, you know, not just celebrities, but just, like, very powerful people in, like, um, eBay and, like, tech companies and stuff. So like I kind of was like okay with that, but this was like Chris. This guy like meant something to me because mm. you know these tech. I mean, nobody knows the nerds of the right. tech company, but this is Chris Brown. <laughs> yeah. So I think the big thing was like actually bouncing creative ideas off of someone that's already you know established in this industry. Right. So I think that was a big thing. And I remember being like, I remember we finished that video, fine by me. And I remember we had another edit session like the next night for the other video. We were literally, so we got nominated for VMA for best long form video right. uh, because we did eight videos, six? I think so. I don't eight. Know if, was this a whole album? Eight? It I was like it was a, a chunk of his entire royalty album. So, you know, it's like a whole movie or whatever. Right. But in the process of filming that, we would we dropped one we dropped, there was like two that dropped right away and then there was like a two month period and then they dropped the next four or something like that, next six. 
and it, I think it was six total. But they dropped all these videos, and we had to do one every day for a week straight. So, but they weren't done. That's why we were mm-hmm. like fucking finishing Fine by Me, and then had to switch over and do the next one, mm-hmm. and the next one, and it was like full chaos. But we did it. We got it all fucking done, which was impressive. But mm-hmm. I remember we did Fine by Me, and that shit looks so ill. And the VFX that you did was like, it's basically like Chris is in some fucking this world he's got to fight these these bad guys Mm -hmm. and you were adding like these crazy like streaks and shit and he looked like a dragon ball z character (laughs) and the next day we go we're editing again and i'd be editing with him him and andrew sandler and we were like talking he was like man that shit was hard blah blah blah. and you walked in i was like i I knew how important it was to be like recognized for what you did and that didn't really happen like he didn't know who did the vfx right you know what i mean like he just knew it got done right but to me, it's like important for us as artists to, re- you know, real yeah, recognize yeah, real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you walked in, and I was like, "Yo, he's the." I hit Chris. I'm like, "Yo, he's the fucking dude that made that shit look crazy with the right. VFX." He's like, "Oh shit, bro, yo, plus like yeah, whatever yeah, he yeah. said." And I was like, "To me, it was important for you to exp- like have yeah. him understand." You yeah. know what I mean? Like, I don't know that as soon as when he recognized what I was capable of doing, you know what I mean? Like, right. it right, just right. changes your mindset. It no, gives it, you it totally does. It. I remember uh, when I had left riveting. Um, at one point I was told from somewhere that, uh, <laughs> I guess Chris was looking for the guy with the hair because he <laughs> wanted some VFX or some shit. Yeah. And I thought that was the coolest thing ever. Like just being recognized and like, I'm never going to cut my hair now. You know, like, <laughs> just the fact that, Where's yeah. that fucking guy with the hair. <laughs> and I, I think it's cool because you were the actually one, actually the one that introduced me to Chris yeah. originally the first time. And like, I, I totally get that, and I think that's pretty awesome. And now he follows both of us on Instagram. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> um, but I mean, it's that, that's I think that's part of like a lot of people don't get it, but I feel like that has to. It goes back to communicating. Like we both found out that we were good at communicating or could build relationships, and mm-hmm. that's like super key in progression. Because now I can go to anything with Chris, and mm-hmm. he'll he knows who I am. Right, you know what I mean? Right, like right, right away, it's right. cool. Like we're always good. Like. I don't know. It's it's important to do that. It's important to develop those types of relationships with the people you work with so you right. can understand and see eye to eye on shit. You right. know what I mean? And that was always like a weird thing there. But uh, when you, for the doc, JR started it, you finished it, right? Right. VFX wise. Because JR left in the middle of the, yeah. he like ended up leaving Riveting in the middle of the doc. But like you took over and what was like some of the main shit that you were doing for that? Um, a lot of the TV comps, <laughs> so all the the visuals that are displayed on screen are on on the TV screens in that uh, documentary. You're trying to tell me that we didn't plug in all those old ass TVs and it had <laughs> crazy no, videos. That's of- fake. <laughs> You're telling me that when it switches from one TV perfectly rack focusing to the other TV of Chris saying something and then it cuts to this news that that's not real? No, it's it's all VFX. Damn. But what's uh crazy? I think there are like eighty total shots, and um, so I had it on this hard drive. Why are you laughing? I had all my VFX on the hard drive, and like I think I had finished it. I think they're like ready to be put like finals delivered. I mean, waiting for color. I think it was. And, like, I plugged in my hard drive, and uh, they weren't there. Uh-uh. So I remember asking everyone who, uh, you know, who... Oh, I did this. <laughs> I forgot about this. Oh, shit. So, yeah, Ben then ended up oh, uh, clearing no. my hard drive. So thankfully, oh, no. though, I had a backup in the and like on Google Storage or something, and, like, I was able to do it. Like, I had to do work again, but I ended up redoing. I actually... It was good in a way because I was prouder of the yeah. final product <laughs> right you know but then you know i had you know like, so something to do but. i just want to make this clear right now on this podcast i've had two different individuals you've had you who did 80 some plates of vfx right. comping tvs that i deleted all of your work <laughs> i'm sorry i also had travis lloyd who wrote uh the second half of his book <laughs> a novel <laughs> that he left on my lap of my computer that he was writing it on for five, six days in my house. Mm-hmm. And I just fucking drug that bitch and put it in the <laughs> trash can and I deleted it because he had already left. So right. I assumed he backed the shit up <laughs> and he calls me, dude, please tell me, will you send me the, I need you to send me a copy of my book. And then I'm like, your book. And he's like, yeah, the file is on your desktop. I'm like, uh, I don't think there is a file on my desktop. And then I'm like, dude, by default, if it's my computer, I just throw away right, clutter. Right, right. Like that's my default yeah, yeah, setting. Yeah, yeah. And I trashed this whole fucking book. He had to rewrite the book and like he had like a deadline he had to hit. And it was the same thing. He said he was also proud of it 
he felt like it was probably a stronger version because he did uh, it twice. Yeah, yeah. We're but just, we're just saying that to make you feel better. Thanks, dude. Fuck, I totally <laughs> forgot about me deleting those fucking videos. I cannot believe that shit. <laughs> fucking idiot. Well, I mean, I, I, we didn't make a big deal about it. I didn't make a big deal about it. No, you didn't, because I totally forgot. <laughs> I, I don't know if I ever really fully understood what I did at that time. Damn, fuck. Um, but anyway, so yeah go watch the welcome to my life video because yeah, it's still on netflix yeah it's on netflix for sure and it's crazy because there are so many tvs we use <laughs> we use that as like a cutaway creatively it was andrew's idea to cut to this world where there's a bunch of old tvs and now i mean now everyone does this shit like cuts to these tvs right. or whatever but at the time we thought it was really unique and so you cut to these tvs and you would see this footage playing. Like if we say we cut to some B-roll that was like a news person reporting on Chris or if it's like a interview or something, we, we could cut to these TVs and we would display them there. So he had to go and get rid of reflections that were on these on the glass and make that shit comp and make it look like it physically fit there. And the, we're moving the camera so we had to match it so it looked real. That's so much work and I just deleted that shit. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry, dog. <laughs> I don't care. Oh, um, it's over. It's it's out. What was there anything else that you did in that? Was there I, that probably wasn't that VFX heavy? Besides For, the, the titles, Brown, the titles, and like just the little uh, screen elements that you know, like the YouTube thing you were talking about. Oh, right, like just, like little things like that. Yeah. Man, what did it feel like to have that? Like, so the movie premiered in LA first before it went live on on right. in theaters. But um, how did it feel for you? I would love to hear your perspective of it, having the movie come out and then seeing like a theater of like a thousand people watch that shit. Well, it's, it's funny because we're so used to watching, like, seeing it over and over and over. And we're just watching on these little screens, you know, but finally going into a theater, you know, after, you know, you grow up watching movies at the theater. It's like an event. It's mm. a thing that you look forward to. Like, Oh, we're going to the movies on Friday or whatever. It's like exciting, but finally seeing something that you created or you had a hand in creating, it was you know pretty pretty awesome and yeah. just like seeing like when you know even though yeah they're cheering for chris brown we're 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 portraying we're, we're portraying him with this video we're making him look good and just knowing that people are like cheering and clapping and just being excited about the fact that oh this guy's up there we helped him you know kind of we, we told it yeah yeah like we, they're cheering it's not they it could be I wouldn't say we made him look good. I think we told his story mm -hmm. in the best light that we could, truthfully. Right. But I think what you mean is like, we could have done it bad and they could yeah. have been like, this is the fucking garbage movie. This shit doesn't make no, sense. I mean, the like, story it, is trash. Even, I, I was proud of it. I yeah. guess I could say, you know, I'm pretty sure we were all proud of it when it came out and all that. And I think that's, it was a really cool feeling. Yeah. I thought yeah. it was, um, it was cool just to like, when you said QC, QC means quality check for my mom. My mom doesn't know what that means. She listens no, to podcasts. she listens to it? Uh, oh, yeah. My mom's probably going to listen to it, too. Shout out to our moms. Um, Stop swearing. Yeah, I'm sorry. I swear. <laughs> I can't help it. Uh, quality check. So that basically means, so if people don't know, when you're making a documentary, what we did was we divided the film into three, maybe four chunks. What do we call those? Uh, yeah, I remember. remember Addison has some fancy words yeah, for this shit. Uh, reels. We make them into reels. So you'd have reel one, which is like the first 20 minutes. You'd have reel two, which is like the next 10 minutes, reel three, et cetera. And so that way, when you export the film, you would export however many reels, you know, when you wanted to watch it. Like if we had a test run in a theater and we had four reels, we would export all four reels. So we would export it. Then we would watch each reel to make sure it was right. Like there was no errors in the, in the, in the piece, like maybe a clip was off or whatever. Then you would take that, put it into another sequence. So you would line up all four videos. So they would play seamlessly with each other. So the entire film would play in order. And then you would export that and then have to watch that again. <laughs> and that's just to get it ready to be seen by someone. You just want to make sure the cut's all done proper. So you quality, you're checking the quality of your film. And we had to do that a fucking million times. Mm -hmm. And that shit, I don't know how many times we've seen this goddamn movie. Like, <laughs> so many times. But the idea is that if something were messed up, the beauty of doing it in chunks. So if you're thinking about creating a documentary, definitely consider doing it this route. But the beauty of it is that when, oh shit, there's uh, at minute 10, 
42 there's a fucking something is offline or whatever like you have to go fix it you would just go back and fix that one reel and then export that one reel so that way you only have to quality check that one specific mm-hmm. part and then you would just add it back in and it's supposed to make it a little bit faster but damn we watched that shit so many times mm-hmm. so by the time we got to the theater and could see it with a thousand people like that's the weird i thought it was so weird like i'm sitting mm-hmm. there like you know h- hoping that the this hit or this specific turn of events or whatever mm-hmm. makes people react cl- yeah, yeah jump or cry yeah, 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 or yeah, whatever yeah. like i don't know it's so cool to see that shit yeah um did you go to any of the theaters when it played besides nah, the just that one you didn't go just the opening we went to both week weekends me and andrew would lauren and who else would come with us i think it was just us three did you go to the one back home too too I wanted to. I, I was home, but I had to, I left the day before to be able to go to the. I don't know to something specific, but my whole family watched it in my hometown, which is dope sick. as fuck. Yeah, it was sick. Um, I don't know. That shit was just so crazy, and then it's all over the world. It's just nuts mm-hmm. how many times you've run into people and they they've seen it or whatever, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. you're like, yeah, I did that shit. Right. It's fucking the coolest feeling. So after that finishes, did you do Mary's? Yep. So we did Mary J. Blige's documentary about. Um, her studio album, Strength of a Woman, uh, it was like a studio al- album documentary that premiered on VH1, which was dope. Um, what all did you do on that? Just like regular There's stuff? There's a lot of cleanup stuff and there's a lot of, <clears throat> yeah, just regular, yeah. you know. Oh, but we did have, what I loved VFX-wise was when we made it look like the world ended. And oh, you, yeah, you, yeah, Remember yeah, that yeah. shot of my yeah, drone? yeah, yeah. That shit looks so sick. We I got a that drone shot of the 6th Street Bridge. They had already torn it down which is perfect timing and it mm-hmm. happened to be like right by our location. So I had the shot where I like pull up and reveal and then Kavika made it look like the entire place just got destroyed by like a fucking, I don't know, world war Z bombing scenario. <laughs> I think I did a bunch of other little uh, effects too, but I think a lot of them weren't actually in the final cut. Like but for what? I, I think I, I built like a, a speaker, like a 3d speaker. Oh and yeah. Shit like that. But I don't think a lot of it made the final cut. Right. But, I mean, a lot of it was in there. So, Hmm. I have, I've yet to like watch the whole thing in its entirety. <laughs> yeah, it's online. Know. It it's, is. Someone put it on YouTube. Oh, I saw it leaks because it went. It, it debuted on VH1, and then they were gonna do something with it, and that, nothing ever happened. So, hmm. but we just looked it up yesterday. I was with Nicole, her uh, pr- executive producer, and she we like. She's like, it's on YouTube now. Yeah. Like, what the fuck? I'm gonna go check it out then. Yeah, check out the movie. Um, so then, what happens after that? You end up you parted ways at Riveting, mm-hmm. and started being like a solo. VFX artist, editor? Right. Uh, yeah, so I felt like um, at Riveting, um, yeah, when I was working with my company, um, we worked whenever we wanted to work. We didn't have a set schedule. We didn't do anything like that. But when I moved to LA, I wanted to grind. I wanted to get the 40 hour a week job, you know, which was the least amount of hours we worked a week. <laughs> yeah. But, um, <laughs> Damn. Yeah, like I, I wanted to just go in and just like kill myself doing it because I wanted to form new relationships like I did in college. I wanted to f- do new things. I wanted to, um, yeah, so, like, I figured out, you know, I, I don't know how f- how long I was at, a year, year and a half or whatever. I don't even know how long I was at Riveting. But then I realized that I kind of missed working on my own schedule, and I, I felt like by the time um, I was, like, towards the ending I was at Riveting, I realized that um, I, had enough, I had made enough connections. I had made enough, you know. There was these people that I worked with um, outside of Riveting, that I could do this myself, like a freelancer in um, in LA. And survive. Yeah, which is also terrifying if you think about it. Because yeah. freelancing itself is terrifying, but doing it in LA against all this competition and everything was, again, terrifying. But um, yeah, like I, 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 and then there was projects picking up with my company that I still worked at, which I, I put off to the side just for that year um, while I was working at Riveting just so I could focus, you know, working in Hollywood. But then, yeah, so I, I slowly got out of that and like i built my clientele and all that and um yeah now i'm like full-time freelance i guess and then you will work with like nocturnal effects Mm -hmm. which is jr's company you'll do stuff with them and bounce around just collaborate with different people at that point yeah pretty much it's 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 interesting because once you have that in so my in was like the people i worked with at riveting um everybody just talks so you know i'll work with ben and Ben will like reference me to someone else, and like I'll kind of work with this person, right. and then we just go from there. So like I, I was confident enough in my, you know, web of people that I was like, okay, I can do this. 
So, but yeah, so. So what were some of the challenges starting? It's almost like you're starting your own business again. Right. Um, what were some of those that you faced? Was there any, challenges? or was it simple? Like, was it just you could be busy enough to flow by? And well, I mean, uh, challenges, I guess, is of course just staying busy. And, like, you never have a consistent thing. Because, you know, my old job was cons- consistent, but I had to, like, refine my eBay and find, you know, these people again. So, but, I mean... It wasn't as difficult because I kind of knew I needed this for my, my business. I needed this and that. Right. But, um, yeah, I mean, it kind of flowed pretty well. So what would you say, like, would would these two videos that you got, the, the Moon Men, were those, like, the first big, big videos you did as a freelancer? Uh, yeah, interestingly, it's one of the biggest, or one of the videos right after. Um, yeah, JR hit me up after I, I left, and... Um, he said that we have these videos. <clears throat> I don't. They, they weren't related at all. They were just two separate projects that just so happened to be nominated. But um, yeah, they were both through Nocturnal, and we both um, we were both on set. Or I, I was on set for the light video. I don't. I don't remember. Yeah, he was on set for the logic video, I think. And like, yeah, we were just, uh, you know, we did all the VFX. <laughs> so when you go to set, are you? You're, can you explain to people like what that's supposed to be like? You're. You're like assisting the director to make sure that they're accomplishing the shots that would work right yeah so like vfx supervisors so you're just making sure because you know a lot of people they don't understand the post process they don't understand um or the post production process they don't understand what is specifically needed for a specific effect so like if you want you know this to catch on fire you need to make sure that you know this is and the camera's moving you need to perfectly light it so that the tracking is perfect or the the green screen's lit perfectly so being on set as a VFX supervi- supervisor, um, so like for the light video, me and JR were there, and so we were making sure that, oh, this guy's lit this way, so that when we add the light, it looks natural, it looks right. correct, and all that, and yeah, so that's basically what they do on set. I, I feel like that's so important for people to start, when you're creating something that you know is going to need VFX, I feel like it, you should always be consulting mm-hmm. with the VFX department, like, mad early. Yeah, that, that's why... I know this is, it's, it's kind of weird, but I really prefer when people contact me, like if they want work from me, when they're in the pre-production process. Mm-hmm. Because I want to be there with your pre-production. Because you need me <laughs> yeah. to tell you, okay, yeah, you can do this, you can't do this, and the best way to achieve this. Or if anything, I'm going to give you better ideas. You know, like, oh, you can do this instead. This right. is going to be cooler. It's going to be more effective. But um, so a lot of times I would like, choose the job because i'll choose the jobs that come to me during pre-production it's like a big thing for me and you know i'll only do like other jobs that because i hate when people are coming to me when it's already shot and like oh can you do this and do i need to make them fly through space motherfucker if it doesn't look perfect they're gonna be like oh can you make it do like no it wasn't shot for this yeah you know yeah i hate i hate that shit (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I feel like it's so it's so unnecessary. Like yeah. it could be fixed by just paying someone a little bit more to come in yeah. a little bit earlier. Um, <sighs> damn, I don't. There's so much shit that I feel like I've been doing all the talking because I just know your story. <laughs> mm. No, um, I feel like I've been talking a lot. The <laughs> no, you're good. So going on beyond, you won these, which is crazy, right? How, how like when you go home is it weird? What do you mean? Like, do people... I mean, you fucking did it. You left Hawaii and you fucking made... Uh, I mean, it's not weird to... Because I, I always... I, I still want to make movies. Movies yeah. are still my thing I want to do. I'm not anywhere near where I want to be. Hmm. But I, I, I know that I've accomplished things that, you know, people wish they could have. But, you know, I don't see it as, like, like an end or anything. But, yeah, when, when, I go ha- when I go home, it's pretty cool when people are like, oh, yeah, you did this. And, like, you know, they recognize it and... Yeah, so I mean, it's 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 cool, but it, it's still like I'm not where I want to be, right, so right. it's not you know. What do you what what do you do to grow as a VFX artist in in Los Angeles, especially like a solo VFX artist? Like what um, challenges or you know or not challenges? What kind <laughs> of uh, damn? What what kind of thing today? Yo, I'm so tired. I've been tired for like days. Mm. What kind of motherfucking milestones are you setting for yourself to achieve to like be able to grow as a creator you know what i mean like i know one of the biggest problems especially with working with you working you know on several different projects is everyone always wants shit for not next to nothing mm-hmm. 
so how do you kind of put your foot down and help yourself elevate so that you can kind of grow not only like yourself as a creator, but allow yourself to work only on bigger budget projects or get paid the proper rates that you deserve? Um, I'm, I'm kind of like lucky in a way, I guess that I have consistent clients that allow me to, um, pick and choose. Like, so for example, uh, I have a client that gives me corporate videos and like, that's like my bread and butter that I'll just do those, you know, to pay the bills. Right. But, um, so like I have that safety net all the time. I don't know if this is answering the question or not, but um, doing those as well as you know picking and choosing what I want to do. So again, going back to choosing the clients that are in pre-production rather than the ones that are already cut and edited. Yeah, you know I get to choose that because of the fact I have that safety net of the corporate videos that I'm doing. Right, which is you know also includes my um, my company, Digital Forge Media. By the way, Digital Forge Media. Forge Digital Forge Media. Is What's the name Forge? Of forge. Yeah, like forging. No, you're forging your signature. No, like forge, like a like a like a metal anvil for your forging a sword kind of shit. Is that how you build a sword? You hit a in like, a forge. Yeah, oh, I that's like know the that. place that you do it in. Cool. Yeah, it's digital. Yeah, it's digital right. forge. Nice. Um, so I guess in a way for you, like if if you had a choice, would you prefer to continue doing those corporate type videos, or would you, if in your perfect world, would you be like? you do that right now as a safety net. Could you, if you could fully make your living off of all creative things, would you get rid of that right away? Of course. <laughs> so, so it's like you have to put certain things in place that you might not want to do, mm -hmm. but it's, you know, you have to do it like to mm -hmm. survive, right? Like that's super right. crucial. Yeah. I, I think what I'm at the moment, what I'm doing mentally is, um, I know I have that safety net, but I'm picking and choosing these clients and stuff in order to, like I'm, I'm still fishing pretty much. I'm still waiting for that big fish to be like, pull it. And you know, I get that. So, I mean, that's what I'm doing right now. So that's why I'm pushing to find more clients pushing to find more people and networking more until I find that big client like eBay was for me. Right. Um, but specifically creative stuff, yeah. creative, you know, and yeah, that's what I'm trying to do at the moment. And like, I, I have these people, but I want it to be, I want it to like maintain itself and just continue. Right. And yeah. I mean, when we were talking last week on our morning roast episode and it was about like creating for yourself, right? The idea of someone talked about it in the, in the community, but it was like, I think it's important to remember to like go create just to create and not always have to create for a job or whatever it is. And so we were talking about that today and I think we talked about you for, for some reason. I don't mm, remember what really? it was. Yeah. I can't remember why. Oh man. I don't know. But anyway, in it, we were talking about the idea of like going out and making some shit with the purpose of it just being fulfilling and not really mattering. Like you, you don't see it affecting your life. And then we use the example of like the people that did that Will Smith Bel Air. Uh, mm -hmm. Have you seen that? The, it's mm -hmm. a movie trailer. Mm -hmm. They like remade the Fresh Prince, and it got it was just like a passion project, and it blew up. And Will Smith hit him up, and now they're like turning it into mm -hmm. something, which is crazy. And um, you would do all that shit with Haji, your dog, right. and you had like an entire fucking series. How many seasons? <laughs> three? I think it's three. Three total seasons. But like, you would do a lot of VFX stuff and you would try to find creative ways just to make like, you know, a boring day turn right. into something fun. Um, and I've used, I've referenced those fucking videos as to clients to be like, oh, we could do something like this. <laughs> really? Yeah, which is crazy. <laughs> but like, like you wouldn't, right, like right. you wouldn't think yeah, I would have, yeah. but that's what, that was the whole point of the morning roast. So for you, how important was it for you to just creatively, and now what's cool is that now how'd you pass, you have those to always look back on, which is right, dope. Right. Like, you always wish that you, you know, documented certain points in your right. life, but um, RIP Haji. <laughs> That dog is fucking hilarious. But you guys in your little series, like how important is it for you or do you think it is to create just to create, just to like continue to practice and grow? Like I'm assuming when you did the Haji series, it was like, oh, I want to learn. Like the video I love is the one where you have Haji and like you shoot a gun at the ground and it turns into a portal. Right, portal and, yeah. yeah. And was it you or him that would like him. fall? Him. <laughs> so Haji would fall through it. Like that was practice for you, right? Right. So can you weigh in on that? Like how yeah, do you think it's so, important? I mean, I've always been a creative. I need to keep creating. I need to um, keep creating. And like, 
Haji just so happened to be there. He's just like a funny looking bulldog. So, I mean, I would base, I would come up with an idea and um, he would be there for me to use. Right. <laughs> I would basically build a, an episode based off what he does because I could not teach him anything. He, um, it's just based off what he um, does. So, like for that Portal one, I remember seeing, I, I, I played Portal. I think it was Portal 2. That's was, a game? Yeah, it's a oh. game. But uh, that's why I bought the gun. That's what the gun's from. Yeah, yeah. Oh, crazy. So I played that, and I was thinking, damn, it'd be sick if I could figure out a way to, you know, utilize the portals and, you know, do the, um, just make that happen. So, I mean, that's how I created that video. And I just made it funny, and, like, you know, it's just, first of all, like, to pass the time, because I'm doing all these, this is when I was in, still in Utah, too. I was doing, like, all these corporate videos, and I, just, I needed to have an outlet for my creativity. And, like, that's how I do it, right. you know? And like it just so happened that I have a dog, so I, you know, I'm gonna make a series. And right. I'm gonna do this. So like, even though I was working hard on video, video was still my outlet, creativity or cre- creatively. So I ended up, you know, making those videos. And yeah, I mean, it's I think it's super important because I I, I didn't care how long I took on them. <laughs> I didn't care how I, if I had a vision like the portal one. If I wanted to make this happen, I just I, I made it happen. And it helped a lot because it kind of breaks the monotony of, um, you know, working on all these other corporate videos or just shit that you don't want to do. Like, right. you could be working for, like, the biggest artists in the world. And if you don't like what you're doing, it's going to kill you, you yeah. know? Um, so, like, just doing your own thing. This is for me. Um, it just really helped my creativity and it, it kind of keeps my brain going. So, mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, the Haji videos really helped me with that. But so. I love it, too, because, like, that's that was my point that I was trying to make earlier. It's like, Mm -hmm. you can make shit for yourself. That was just for you. That was your outlet. That was your Mm -hmm. exercise, whatever it is. But like, you didn't know that. I think that's what, I think I showed the dudes at Disney when we did the Disney. Like, I think I showed them that shit. It was like, dude, he's mad creative. Check this thing out. Blah, blah, blah. (laughs) This is hilarious. Like, I can't remember if it was them or someone else, but like your dumb video to you, was something I used as a thing and it goes back to remember and I told this in the morning roast but when MTV hit me up because they liked the schoolboy Q shit Mm -hmm. and then they referenced the Black Window Cream Freestyle Fridays that we did Mm -hmm. and they were like man that shit was so funny how you made fun of the guy Coleman at the end because he didn't rap to the time of the beat and but like through editing you were able to crack a joke and we love that about you blah 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 I'm like what the fuck how did you watch that video (laughs) that's what I said that's what I said it was a passion it was something just for us that was funny that got seen by MTV. Right, right, right. Like, that's crazy. That's crazy. So you never know. I, I right. just think, I just wanted to weigh in on that because I thought that was an interesting subject and, and I think that was a good example of how, like I at least used that, your yeah, yeah, old yeah. videos that were just practiced to you. Yeah. But I mean, I've gotten a lot of work from that kind of stuff with like people just saying, like, I really like how you did this effect. Can you do it in this video? Right. And like, it's, it's ranged from like really small, like, I don't know, rappers or whatever to like, you know, huge clients. Yeah. That's, you know, that, that's see a video and like, I want to do something like this. You right. Know? And it just it goes from there. It's, it's awesome. I, I really like how in the era or the world that we live in right now where you, uh, see all these different creators come up and they're now starting to use a lot of VFX heavy content in their Mm -hmm. videos. Um, I love watching your reaction to that because (laughs) so someone will come out and it'll just get mad views or, or whatever you have like these different creators like Gibson and you have a, a, a lyrical lemonade and people like that Cole Bennett or whatever that just dive deep into VFX and apply it to like a dope rapper's video that's just a SoundCloud rapper that's gonna boom view wise and then when you watch it you're like fuck I can do that shit too like and (laughs) you need to make like I feel like you always need to make a statement that you can do it so then you just (laughs) go out and literally just like walk outside and shoot some shit just to flex on everybody that you can do it too yeah yeah I mean I I think my entire career in this industry I guess starting from college is even my friends when I first meet them even you I'm not gonna lie when I first met you, I was like, I have to fucking be better than this. <laughs> yeah. Or like guys in college, like I have to fucking be better than these right. guys. Like that's how I always, that, it's like a competitive thing. It's not like a, like I hate you. It's yeah, just it's like, like baseball I, and the yeah, sports yeah. part yeah, of it. It's just like, I have to be better than them. So like when I see these guys doing super simple shit, but like they're getting views on views and views. And, like, and checks. Yeah. And like I can do it. I just, I just need to be found. You know, I just, I, I just need to have the right connections to find that one thing that's going to pop it off. Right. You know? So it's just, Yeah. <laughs> 
That's well, funny that you noticed that. Do, yeah, for, <laughs> for sure I noticed. I mean, there was literally like Dave remembers it. Remember that week where he was just like fucking throwing up content, like it was just nonstop, just projectile <laughs> vomiting every trick in the book that was popping right at, during that week or that month or year. Kavika had a video that had it like all of it in one. <laughs> I was like, I was like, yo, he really tried to fuck up everybody in the game. I'm just fucking mad. It's like, yes, we get it. You can do it too. But how 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 difficult is that for you from a like? I think it's weird because you come in from like a traditional quote unquote side of creating almost because you came up and you worked through these companies, you did these massive videos and then there's these, these young dudes that are coming up and chicks. All right. (laughs) That are coming up in the game. Shout out to like cash bunny and all them. Like they're fucking ill that are just murdering it with it. And then they get big clients or they get, you know, whatever it Mm -hmm. is, they're getting them big views and like, and they're doing it and they're being contacted directly and trusted directly. Mm -hmm. Like Mm -hmm. I think that has to go with, um, them playing a role in their culture and their, you know I mean? Like, Mm -hmm. especially Cole Bennett, I think he's like a great person to look at how he's just designed this like insane brand for his city. Mm Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And by Mm -hmm. default, if you're the one booking the shows in Chicago and doing all these things and people want to fuck with you, but how hard is that for you? Because you do feel like you need to make sure people know that you're that good at that shit. Like, Mm -hmm. I don't know. What's your thought process behind it? You mean just like constantly proving that you can, that you can do what everyone else can do. Like I know if I watch one of these people's videos right now and someone makes some fucking asteroid fly through the air and hit Mm -hmm. some building and shit, for sure you can do it. Like anyone... In, maybe if I'm at a movie and I'm watching some shit that The Rock's in, mm-hmm. I'm like, we could probably, he may need, that was probably like a hundred people that did that shit. Right. You know what I mean? But like a majority of shit that's online, like I always know and I always talk like, because I know you can handle that. Like, oh, uh, mm-hmm. between K- K- Kavika and JR, that's easy. Like we can get that shit done. You know what I mean? Like, right. but I feel like for you as a creator, it's like you need to have your voice be heard in a weird way. Mm-hmm. So how, you know, is Instagram your outlet? I mean, YouTube used to be, but, like, it's hard to just find out ways to, like, get it out there. I mean, I feel like with these other creators, um, they just, they hit something, you know, and they hit somewhere and all these people start following them and stuff like that. Um, like, I don't have that follow, the following, I don't have all that, but um, I still continue to create. And I'm just waiting for some, that point where I get seen by someone <laughs> or something and it goes from there. I don't know how to ex- answer this question. I know, it's weird. <laughs> well, it, it is weird. But that's I think that's what's great about us, you know, the conversations we've been having about trying to, like, him diving into how he does shit is so crucial. And right. us adding that as an element of what we do with Black and No Cream, like providing and building some sort of platform where now you Kavikas can be seen and right. deserve to be seen is super crucial, which is, I'm working on that shit. But um, I think that that's where it changes because then all of a sudden if, if we're creating tutorials or we're showing examples and we're going out and creating real life experiences um, that you can apply, like think of anything that you, like anytime you're bored and you go outside and you, you just want to film a video and try to do some wild trippy shit. Mm -hmm. Now replace you, whoever you or you or Haji at the time Mm -hmm. with fucking name, any SoundCloud rapper. Right. If you had little pump tomorrow and you could just go make a video with little pump, what are you going to make? Right. probably the same shit that Gibson yeah. would have made or yeah, probably yeah. the same shit that this dude would have made. You know what I mean? Like, right. of course, but I think there's a difference in just you having gone through these production companies that have access to the talent mm-hmm. versus you just connecting directly with the talent, but it's also getting the talent to fucking see you right. when you have, a, you know, 2000 followers on Instagram or some shit and people right. don't really pay attention to everything. But I think, I think it's just an interesting, I, I don't know. Cause it, you, it's like half a resume for you that you use on Instagram Mm-hmm. But it's also, I think you do it just to stun on everybody, <laughs> on everybody. <Pretty> much. <laughs> right. That's, that's probably like the majority of what, it. What's interesting is this is brand new. I mean, like in the history of the world, this, just this, uh, kind of way to get a job or whatever, get noticed is yeah. just so brand new. So I think that's pretty amazing that people have like gone into it so quickly and stuff like that. Yeah. And it, it's just, I guess for me, it's trying to find the way to get in now, <laughs> mm. but I mean, I don't know. I, I've gotten a lot of jobs, you know, from what I post on social media, which kind of sucks because <laughs> I don't know. I'm like, social media is not my favorite thing, <laughs> but like, that's your resume now, like you said. And, um, and Kavika's resume is the most sloppy thing I've ever seen because it'll be <laughs> the illest video and then he'll post a fucking 
like video of him holding a fish and the next video is him <laughs> fucking <laughs> you scrolling through your Instagram's hilarious I mean all his video or his Instagram is basically all shot on a GoPro hero like <laughs> three hero four five five and it's just him he's the master at taking selfies <laughs> the fucking master like we went to um where we go we went to New York mm-hmm. and uh, I directed this thing for Ye, so I had mm-hmm. Kavika come and Kavika shot it and did the VFX. So you need to check that series out. It has King Bash, Trevor Noah, Amanda Cerny, um, Stone Mountain. Um, <laughs> remember that? Yeah. Uh, but everyone was in it, and and we had some dope VFX moments and shit, and it was fun. But it, <laughs> we were taking a group shot of all of us with a nice camera, my camera, and Kavika was like setting up his GoPro real quick because I know he just wanted to have the picture quicker. <laughs> So he has his GoPro setting up and it's just like taking photos every two seconds or whatever. And he like runs over. And then when we were at uh, Casey Neistat's house, this is one of my favorite stories. We're at Casey Neistat's uh, 368 building. EA is doing an event there and I went there and someone introduced me to Casey. So then Casey starts, he was like really cool. He was talking mm-hmm, to us for like mm-hmm. fucking 30 minutes. It was awesome. It was a really nice dude. Um, we're sitting there. <laughs> I'm, t- <laughs> I'm talking to Casey and I'm like, you were, me and Kavika are sitting across from each other. So I'm just talking to Casey and Kavika was over by Casey. And then Kavika walks by me. Like he walked over by Casey and then he was walking back by me. And as he passed me, he goes, got it, bitch. <laughs> Something like along the lines of got it, bitch. And I was like, what the fuck is he talking about? And then in the car, he shows me. And what he did was he set his GoPro down on like a counter <laughs> had itself taking pictures and then he just walked over stood by Casey for like two seconds got his picture next to Casey and then came back and just got it bitch and I was like oh just to get a fucking he's a selfie king you are the king at fucking taking pictures with the GoPro well even even that like all my pretty much all my Instagram is me shooting myself yeah everything even like all the Haji videos that's just me shooting myself like nobody helped me with any of those things. Like this picture of the last picture you posted right now is um, you with <laughs> you with Trevor Noah and all them. Your your captions are always so dumb. Your caption is <laughs> when I grow up, I still want to make movies. Trevor heard my fart. Amanda smelled it. Dave appreciated it. Sean captured it. And, and it's, you gotta look at their faces. You gotta right? see all their faces. But <laughs> it's like a hard ass picture of Kavika just standing there holding a camera. All this these talented people are around him. I don't even have a dope picture like this, I don't think. <laughs> oh, shit. But oh, it was yeah, cool because you wanted to make a video. He, he he kept filming. Fuck, this shit's so dope. Did you even post that video? What video? The one where the... Oh, yeah, you, it's, it's somewhere. It's on Instagram, right? Yeah. Like, he would just film. He was filming the whole trip, which was great. But he would, like, have do the typical, like, uh, YouTuber signing off thing where you, like, start right. on your hand and the camera pulls out. And then he would show that world and then he'd bring it back into his right. hand. And the whole thing's just quick jump cuts of like our whole trip, our 36 hour trip that we had mm-hmm. to New York. And it's like the coolest shit. I don't know. You just, I feel like, I feel like creators like you and I are always underrated in the sense of like, like there's so much shit I've done that my fans quote unquote have no idea about, you know what I mean? Like, well, I think that's the problem, not the problem, but it's a problem as well as a, a good thing, I guess is we not to like you know but we can do everything like the creativity we have so much that's not we're just not one specific thing yeah. we're not just dope colorists we're right. not just dope editors yeah. we're not just dope video guys no shame to them yeah 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 but we we do everything so like there's nothing that people can like if they see like he does too much shit like I want someone that specializes in this yeah. but I mean like if you give us a chance we'll specialize in this right now yeah you know I, I think that's that's you know like a problem slash a dope uh, good thing to have but I mean I feel like that's, I'm like, I don't know if it's, if I should start honing in on a specific thing because I don't want to do that. Right. <laughs> like I, I like being able to do everything. So like having all these different ideas, like on my Instagram, for example, I can do all those things. I just don't, I don't do one specific thing. I think that kind of turns off some clients, I guess, because they want, they all want a specific thing. Yeah. You know, instead of just coming to me for like, can you do this? It's like, it, it, they want to just know like yeah, it's like yeah it's, yeah because it's, it's hard to kind of showcase all of the things that you do mm-hmm. you know what i mean like it's not that easy to like right like I, I hate when i'm like having a conversation with someone and they talk about something that i've done before right 
like yeah we need to hire someone like this or whatever and i'm like motherfucker i do that shit yeah 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 i'm like you don't know i do that like damn um like everybody trips out when they find out i have like a whole camera lighting set like oh you shoot too yeah I'm like yes yeah. <laughs> yeah i do everything right you know i know and i don't know if that's uh, an error on our part but it becomes difficult when you try to highlight every single thing yeah. that you do yeah when it when you do such a variety of things and you're right. good at all of them it's like it's hard to put all that under an right. umbrella or whatever yeah. um this is good how do you feel? You were so nervous before we started this podcast. Uh, I mean, I hate being on camera and I hate my voice. So. Ty, you'll love watching and listening to this oh, episode then. Fuck. And I mean, it's just terrifying thinking that someone's going to be playing this in their car. <laughs> <laughs> this is heavy as fuck. This, this moon man is heavy as fuck. Mm-hmm. I have to carry that in the Uber. I was going to fucking boost it over too. <laughs> oh no. You would have fucking dropped that shit for sure. Yeah. Um, Whatever though. Okay. So I want to ask, I let the community ask questions. So we're going to, we're going to run that bitch. Are we quick. live? Yeah, say what's up to all the people. Oh, sh- not? No, I'm kidding. Oh, okay. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> no I don't do live because sometimes people be talking about some NDA shit and then they realize it like two minutes later and they're like, uh, oh, uh, yeah, oh, can yeah, I yeah. not talk about this? And I was like, fuck. Um, so on our Patreon, mm-hmm. I posted it. Of course, no one saw it. It was too last minute and I've been terrible at making Patreon dope. Um, Let's see who asked questions. I saw some uh, questions on Facebook. Yeah, I did, but I want to ask Patreon first because I respect it. Uh, Garen Weeks, he says, um, best resources for learning VFX. I'm just going to hold on to this fucking moon man while we ask these questions. Uh, For me, um, I actually learned everything pretty much. I learned basics. So I had a great, awesome teacher at at, uh, my college. His name is Ted Monroe. Um, I think he's in New York now. So hi, Ted. Hi, Ted. But um, he was really good. He believed, you know, he believed that he taught us really the basics of After Effects and like compositing and stuff. But I think it's just getting over that hump of being afraid of After Effects. Yeah. Because I mean, I primarily use After Effects. I do 3D and stuff and whatever, but I primarily use After After Effects. But just getting over that hump of being afraid of the software and just like finding, like just think, oh, I want to make a fireball. And, um, I, I really I use a lot of YouTube, <laughs> right? And a lot of um, I just play around with each and every effect that's in there, every tool that's in there. So it's like it's not how good the tool is; it's how good you are with the tool. Mm. And I think that um, that's what I learned while just fucking around in After Effects forever and doing all those little things in college, specifically um, all those like short films over the weekends and finding out like blowing up cars like right. in After Effects and just constantly adding on to what you can so i know a lot of things i do is like very uh i guess unorthodox it's not the best way to do things in the software but i still get to what i need to the show result. yeah the result and the effect hmm. so it's just consistently working hard and youtube I, youtube and video copilot of course i was gonna i was trying to wait till you no, said it and i want to say it at the same time andrew, Cam- andrew kramer is my boy andrew kramer <laughs> this is andrew kramer video copilot damn yeah he's he's amazing but like and even that, so when you follow tutorials, don't forget them. Like, follow the tutorial and f- figure out what each little, like, button does on, on, you know, in the effect and just expand on it. Don't just follow it directly, one, you know, um, step by step. Yeah. And that's how I learned, too, is just, oh, shit, this can do this, and then you just fuck with it forever, right. you know, and just keep building on that. It's just, you know, it's just knowing your toolbox and I think just working with it. being able to download, like, now like people like Josh, Olufemi tutorials, mm-hmm. he'll, he'll include project files that you can like download and work with. Right. Um, I think that's so like now it can seem like it's just another thing to, for someone to make money. But right. to me, I feel like when I was learning how to use final cut seven fucking or five back FCP in the day. Seven. Yeah, me too. <laughs> uh, final cut five. When I first got it, I was, I had a book and mm-hmm. I bought the book and I, and it would be like work along. I think it came with some software <laughs> that I could download. It had like videos that I could like edit and shit, right. but it would teach you how to do these things. And I would try to like work along with this book. Mm-hmm. It was so crucial. And I feel like if you can find a proper tutorial and they do have that asset, it's mm-hmm. totally worth 30 bucks, $40, however much it costs to do right. that uh, shit. Even on top of that, when you're kind of, you know, maybe past the beginner stage, you can learn how to, um, you figure out, new ways that people do other things so like something simple you can find some other way that someone did it simpler right you know so if you download that project file you could learn that so it's just constantly forcing yourself to learn mm. and i love learning so you yeah know, it's kind of perfect easy super crucial um you saw the video i posted um in black window cream oh yeah 
It's you with these beautiful wood or moon men. I keep calling them Woody Awards. I don't know what the fuck is a Woody? Woody. I don't know. I thought that was actually a thing. I think it is. I don't know why I keep I saying know. it. Um, Sean Sauce commented. He said, "Can you do a tutorial of that video?" <laughs> Sean Sauce. Uh, how much does his imagination limit him, if at all, when coming up with VFX ideas? Does your imagination ever limit you? Not at all. So I think for that video, um, there are so many elements in <laughs> there that I would need someone to specify what they want to know exactly because that video i actually did i just recorded myself with the um, i originally wanted to do some stupid video with me just holding them but it ended up turning into what it is in that video and it became like a breaking the fourth wall kind of thing it's basically like sorry that's me playing oh. it it's basically like kavika opening up um an after effects project and it's a video of himself and then he's just adding in Right. It's compositing the the moon men into his hands and yeah so i mean even that i mean it goes into the second question like does my imagination was it uh, limit yourself not at all because even that my imagination started going crazier because i was like oh i should do it in after effects i should make like you know this is how i got here because yeah. i learned this software i learned how to do this and you know and just there's like little easter eggs in there because like there's my skateboards in the background because i i skateboard all over the place when i'm like stressed or something or like getting somewhere or yeah like, uh, there's a monster energy drink in the back and i like drink monster and all that but like it's just building on that and like my imagination doesn't limit me but i think my <laughs> i guess my computer <laughs> limits me <laughs> yeah. i mean you know it takes forever to render shit and whatever but i mean no i mean I keep going with that. <laughs> right, right, right. Um, Fernando says Kavika is the, he put the trophy emoji, the fire emoji, and the 100% emoji. How are you able to post all this ton of fire on Instagram almost daily? Any content creator plan strategy? I think he's just saying, do you have a plan or strategy when you think about content? Like, do you have a plan to roll out content every week? Um, or do you just do it on the fly? I'm pretty, it's pretty much on the fly. Like, when I have time, I don't like, chill i just i try to make more videos or go fishing mm. <laughs> yep but um no i mean it, it, there's no schedule there's nothing it's just because i you know i work with video and that's what i do for fun is video and i just there's no like schedule there's nothing it's just if i want to do it you know yeah i mean it might help if i had a schedule <laughs> right but you know it's just yeah um cory cataldo cataldo he says, how do you combat the uneasy feeling of not always posting on social? How do I combat that? Yeah, is there, like, you know, if all of a sudden you haven't posted in a week, does that drive you crazy or what? Honestly, it doesn't. <laughs> I, 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 a lot of people say I should get more into social, because I'm not really big into trying to build a following or whatever. And I, and I know a lot of people are telling me that I should and all this stuff. I've, like, never tried to do that. Um, <clears throat> so I mean I don't you know have that feeling I guess yeah I tell you. <laughs> um, I think this is a great question James Hardman he says what's your longest render time and what do you do between rendering oh shit longest render time for like a project yeah well I mean I do a lot of 3D stuff so I mean my computer's old as fuck so those take you know forever um I don't know the specific longest render time. There's been many, like over a couple days kind of thing. But um, Jesus Christ. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm still a bit of work because it's just contained its, in its own software, but it's, it's still pretty crazy. I'm surprised my computer's not dead yet. Right. But um, what was the end of that question? What do you do in between your rendering? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> well, I mean, other than... Uh, because I, I live by myself, so I can do whatever the fuck I want. And, you know, I don't have a set schedule, so I can do whatever the fuck I want. But um, I, I like to go fishing. <laughs> he fishes all the time. Yeah, I go fishing. All, I do it all by myself, too. So it's whatever. Where do you fish at? Um, LA is not the best place to go fishing, but I just go off Malibu and stuff like that. Damn, so you're driving all the way to Malibu every time you want to go fishing? Yeah, my shitty, oh, my shitty ass truck. Damn, how does the truck make it there? She's she's a good girl. Yeah. But she, um, I mean, it's, 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 I usually like go in the mornings and stuff right. and do all that kind of stuff, so. Cool. I mean, I, I make videos when I'm not, when I'm rendering. So. Right. <laughs> um, so me and Kavika have been talking about getting 
like creating some tutorials because the content he makes is so next level and i think if we could dive into your brain a little bit more uh that shit could go a long way for a lot of yeah. people yeah that sounds cool um so definitely planning on us starting that eventually it's gonna be it's gonna be fucking crazy i think like you yeah. you've he's, he's already made some we're just gonna figure out how to package it and then right and then start releasing stuff so uh that's exciting for uh, another black window cream I, I think on top of that i just want to say that um I know a lot of people, they're afraid to show like their secrets, quote unquote, and stuff like that. But I think um, just me being able to show people how I do certain things, it'll like make you know people that consume this information better, as well as me better. Because I know, okay, these guys know how to do this. I need to get better mm. to make them want something right. you know so i think it benefits everybody right <laughs> so i'm not just doing it for you know whatever like money or whatever you know I'm, I'm doing it to better myself as well totally so i think you know it's fun learning together so and those people are going to grow into becoming really ill and then they're going to do some shit and right. you're going to learn from them you yeah. know what i mean for about i'll hire you you know yeah exactly <laughs> exactly yeah. yeah um all right cool uh so if anyone got this far in the podcast um we talked for a minute, an hour and 50 minutes, actually. Oh, wow, really? Yeah, it's a good little podcast. Cool. What uh, I let you pick a hashtag, and then I tell anyone that's listening to go to your most recent Instagram post and comment the hashtag that you're about to pick and tag me at Ben Rovers World so we both know that they listen to the whole <laughs> podcast. Right. So you can pick any hashtag that you want. What do you want it to be? Um, Aloha. Aloha. All lowercase. Okay. Is that cool? Yeah, it's tight. <laughs> um, how do you want people to find you? Do you have a website? Do you do that? I, I, I do, but I need to update it. Um, yeah. I think it's my name. All right, don't com. go there. Um, go to his Instagram. Yeah. Uh, my website uh, URL is on my Instagram, so. Yeah. Yeah. K dot Oika. K dot A-W-I-K-A. That's his Instagram. Make sure to follow him. This shit is fucking great. Does you? I like the stuff that you've been doing with Mo Beats too. Big Sean's DJ. Um, yeah, he has a he actually has a bunch of stuff backed up that he's waiting to release. So, yeah, yeah. So that's cool. Jarden is that the name of the clothing company? Yeah, uh, that's like a marijuana dispensary, I think. Oh, cool. That's yeah. dope. Yeah, he's been doing different collabs with uh, Big Sean's DJ, and um, I need to get him on the podcast soon. Yeah, he'd be, that'd be fun cool. to have on here. Um, but the stuff you guys are making is fucking dope. Anyway, how do you want to end this, man? This was a good one. I don't know how do you usually end them. I ask you that question and see what you say. Oh, fuck. I don't know. I'm probably going to take this footage and do something stupid with it, so. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Should we cheers uh, the moon men? Just a little tap. Oh, my God. Oh, God. It's so scary. This one needs to, like, get fixed. This one needs to stay in my house. All right. Bye. <laughs> Aloha. Ba 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 ba. That's it for episode 77, I think, with Kavika Bonis. The motherfucker's a genius. If you want to follow him and see what he does every day, follow his Instagram. Um, his work is amazing. You've seen it in theaters. You've seen it in music videos all over the world, on YouTube, in your face. Motherfucking probably on MTV. Kavika's a beast. So make sure to tune in to Kavika. Um, yeah, new episodes every single Wednesday and Friday, or every single Wednesday and Sunday. I fucked that up. But, uh, merch shop bwnc.com patreon and uh yeah we're about to fucking kick it into gear it's been an insane few weeks we're through it gotta shoot a couple shows this week for myself with normani and then uh and then i'm back to the black window cream daily dosage of trying to turn this shit up to motherfucking 10 uh yeah that's it wednesday and sundays see you guys then all right bye bitch <laughs>